Do you think uh, George is an AWL? He's originally yes. Over a boy? Yeah, I think if you if you hit him with true serum, should we should we call him? No, no, we don't have to put him on the spot. Let's call, 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 call him. Call him. I'll call him. I'll call him. I'll call him. I'll call him. Oh, no, oh, I'll call him. I'll call him. You know what? He's uh, he might still be pissed off at Hank for betting on the Cowboys. Oh yeah, that was bad. so. That's on Hank. So if he's if he says you guys, it's because of Hank. Yeah, it's not us. Who's not gotten a lot do of the ball? Do you think time or call? I just called. What'd you call? George. On today's part in my take, we've got a ton of stuff to talk about. We got game sevens. We've got big time hockey, NBA playoffs, NFL draft recap, and we got our boys. Bussin' with the boys, Will Compton and Terry Luan in studio. Great talk with them. And it's all brought to you by our friends at ourselves. Today's part of my take is brought to you by the Barstool Sportsbook. The Barstool Sportsbook is now offering a $1,000 bonus for new players. If your first bet loses, get up to $1,000 in bonus cash. So download and create an account today. Use code TAKE to unlock your $1,000 Bonus, be sure to use code TAKE to unlock your $1,000 bonus. I'm pulling up the app right now. I'm looking at it. We're we going to have a nice sweet bet exclusive oh. boosted for the uh, oh. Sixers Celtics if you want to get involved in the oh. Soul Patch bet a little bit more. Feel it in your plums. I think they'll have a uh, Sixers option as well. Okay. Max wanted that. We do have, uh, yeah, the Celtics are 10-point favorites as we're taping this right now for Monday night's game, which we will be live streaming. If you'd like... Uh, let's see. Conference winners. You can bet the Warriors plus two twenty five. You can bet the Lakers plus three twenty five. Uh, Celtics are right now the favorite to win the title plus one thirty. So the favorite Congrats. to win a title for you, Hank. That won't go poorly. Uh, so go check it out. Barstool Sportsbook right now. Thousand dollar bonus for new players. If your first bet loses, get up to a thousand dollars in bonus cash. Download and create an account today. Use code TAKE to unlock your $1,000 bonus. Be sure to use code TAKE to unlock your $1,000 bonus. Terms apply. Must be 21 plus. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take. Today is Monday, May 1st, and Hank, we should probably just start with you. Hank, the floor is yours. Hank, PFT's not saying anything. I, I want to say that the, <laughs> well, the, the Bruins was season was say, not a failure. I was trying to say that, okay. uh, Hank, you know, he gave me the floor all, and you just stepped all I'm over. I'm sorry for your loss. I had the floor. I, was, well, I we, did not Hank, invite you to dance with me. <laughs> Hank, we should usually introduce what we're talking about. You always remind no, people to do that. So no, I'm just trying to be know. helpful. Yeah, but go ahead. The Bruins lost in heartbreaking fashion after after being the President's Cup trophy winner. Uh, they they had the best, the most wins in NHL history this year. And I think we said before this series started, it would be a colossal failure, anything less than Stanley Cup. This was this was a lot less than Stanley Cup. You lost in the first round to Jake's Florida Panthers. Die hard, Jake. Jake. Hit you with a really, really, uh, a very polite celebration. Almost too polite when he won. Um, so, Hank, the floor is yours. How do you feel about your Boston Bruins being the biggest chokers in the history of the NHL? Yeah, I want to use the the Giannis quote and say that it's not a failure. It's just steps to success. But it's I don't know how we could say that. That was a complete abject failure. It just hurt a lot, especially at the end of the game. Bergeron was going through the the teammate handshake line and hugging everyone seemed like that might be his last, you know, it could be it for him. They've had an unbelievable run for the last, I don't even know, over 10 years, to that since 2011. And they had their best team of all time this year. It felt like this was going to and they, you know, they made it to game 7 in the Stanley Cup a couple years ago, lost that. This felt like it was going to be a great, you know, end of the era, mm -hmm. championship mm -hmm. run, most points of all time, most wins of all time. Would have been the best it's, team of all time. It's, President's it, Cup, they got the goalie cup, whatever the fuck that was. Pasta got the scoring yeah, cup, whatever the yeah. fuck that's called. It, it, it's it's the it's the complete down, failure. It's the downside of sports fandom because you sit there and you grind with them all year long and you watch all these wins and you think it's a magical ride and then it gets cut short and it's like unfinished business. 
and obviously, you know, I am a, a Bruins diehard, although, you know, it's been seven games. I didn't see this team yeah, Hank, as the best team of all time. But Hank, Hank was saying, as far as I could tell, this is the this team's not that good from yeah, what I've was, watched no, this year. This were. was this was not the team that people watched in the regular season. Yeah, yeah it's, it's Hank, true. All right, so I got spin zone for you, Hank, because I'm you know that did suck. I mean, there game seven playoff hockey. There's nothing like it in sports. Game seven. Playoff hockey overtime, it is the cruelest thing in all of sports. It is yeah. the, the the feeling you get when you lose a game seven. I was saying to Feidelberg, uh, uh, you know, in, in between periods, I was like, dude, even like the Blackhawks runs, like I still can, can visualize the Kings in 2014 beating the Blackhawks in overtime in game seven, the Western Conference final, the puck like bouncing in and being like, wait. It's over. There's nothing like you just mm-hmm. it. Fe- you sit there and be like, how is it over? Like, keep this game going. This is not fair. There's nothing like it in sports. But, Hank, I have something to cheer you up. One is President's, you know, Co- Trump. Co- sorry, excuse me. President's Cup trophy like that. That ha- This happens. This happens a lot. OK, and you could just word for word, which I think you should do right now, live while we're taping, just copy and paste the Tampa Bay Lightning tweet. From 2019, when they had the best record in the NHL and they got swept by the Blue Jackets in the first round, for people who don't remember it, the Tampa Bay Lightning main account tweeted this right after: "We don't have any words, and we know you don't want to hear them. We understand your anger, your frustration, your sadness, everything you're feeling. We get it. This isn't the ending we imagined, and certainly not the one we wanted. Thank you for being there the entire way. You got to just tweet that. Let everyone know you're there for them." I'm not there for that. <laughs> You're out of the Celtics. <laughs> you got way bigger business to go. Honestly, and this you is do. where it's, you know, Boston people might get mad at me because obviously I am a diehard Bruins fan, but I am more of a diehard Celtics fan. This is bad for the Celtics. This is like as yeah. a city as a whole. You're both, you know, top seeds. You got to you gotta put the pressure on in the early rounds. And the fact that the Bruins lost, it almost kind of like sets the tone of like anything can happen. And that's not where yeah. you want to be. You want to be the city of champions. You want to be, you know, the powerhouse Everyone's going to the Stanley Cup Finals. Everyone's going to the NBA Championship. They had a lead that looked like, you know, they they had a chance to empty net. Pasta fucking got that goal. He had, he scored the overtime goal. It got so lucky, hit the goal. He's like stick when he wasn't even trying to block it. That's a save. But it wasn't. Okay. It was an accidental save. <laughs> it was, yeah, by mistake. He was just in really good position. And you could say that it's the, it's the curse of Bobrovsky, too. Sergei Bobrovsky. Uh, the goaltender for this Florida Panthers team is also the goaltender for the Columbus Blue Jackets mm. when they beat the Tampa Bay Lightnings, mm. whose statement Hank is about to crib right now, word for word. Now, we should address, Hank, the NHL rig conversation. Yeah. Because it seems like there was a script that needed to be followed at the end of this game with a minute left, actually just over a minute left. I'd say about a minute five left. The graphic flashed on the screen. The score bug updated. It said goal, Florida Panthers, tie ball game, 3-3. Yeah. At, I, right at the – and it was about five seconds before the actual goal was, was more scored. more than that. And it was like 20 seconds. I caught, We were on the live stream. I was like, why did a goal just flash? And everyone was like, wait, I didn't yeah. see that. It was, yeah, you can it was watch like 20 it. You can, seconds. You can watch it back, clear as day. They updated the score before the puck went in. So, hmm, really makes you think on that. And – now, if you are a Leafs fan out there, and and before this game, Hank, I told you, I, I I tweeted this out just for the record that I wanted the Bruins to win because you want to beat the best if you want to be the best, you know, no easy ways out. I didn't want the Panthers. I wanted Hank. I wanted the Bruins. I think all of Toronto would back me up on that. They were saying we want Florida, uh, but I think what they were really saying, they were trying to reverse jinx themselves into saying that we want the Bruins. That also, um, th- just to defend Toronto for a second, there was also a clip. Where they said we want Boston, they were just oh, chanting, covering shit. your bases. Yeah, yeah, right. They were chanting style. both, yeah. and then the one obviously saying we want Florida uh, got got put out there. We can yeah, say so Billy. I, I, Billy's got. I wanted he wants Hank to, to win, and I wanted to go through Hank to get to get to the Stanley Cup Finals. Yeah, I just want to say, what's worse, regular season success and then losing all in the Super Bowl with the eighteen one Patriots season, or this Bruins collapse? Good question. Good question, I mean, because a first round upset's almost worse than getting all the way to the end. It's definitely the Super Bowl. What are you are you thinking right now? 
No, no it's obviously oh, the oh, Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, this no, was the greatest regular season of all time. But it's but it, no, this but this happens is, that in was, hockey. That was an upset. This is a collapse. This happens in hockey. This is not like yeah. I'm not just trying to make different when it's Hank, one game. I'm not situation. trying to make Hank feel better. This is not on the same level as the Milwaukee Bucks. This is not on the same level as a one seed losing a sixteen. This happens every few years. Like I mean, the, uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning were the best team in hockey. They got swept in the first round. I think the Avs think did Hank, it a couple of years ago. I don't think Hank was thinking about the answer to that. Hank was thinking about how he wanted to kill Billy. Yeah. Like what method he was going to use to kill That's him in that, in that moment. They're very but similar. I disagree with the Big Cat. I think this is worse than the Bucks, Just no. because the Bruins. No. Yes, yes. Because the Bruins were the best hockey team of all time. That, of all but, time. But they also, that all also time. was, that, that also was a uh, record that is hard. To, like the Red Wings in the 90s had a better record if they had, they had ties back then. So I mean, well, it's also it's it's like yeah. the Golden State Warriors when they had the best record yeah. in the NBA. Yeah. If they were to lose in the first round, that would be worse than the Bucks losing in the first. I just think it happens like, a lot in hockey. Like it does. It does, it, it it happens does happen more from time often to time than the, and like it just happens a lot in hockey. So I don't. I like there. It's it's just not. It's it. There's precedent for it. Uh, it it happens. It seems like every couple of years they showed the graphic. The last time a team won, had the best record and won the Stanley Cup is. All the way back to 2013, so it tells you like the the volatility of the of the NHL playoffs. Yeah, and I think it's like back to 2007. It's only I think there've only been one, maybe two Stanley Cup champions that also won the Presidents Cup trophy. Which I love that we just go back and forth all the time, and now we're just saying Presidents Cup trophy. I don't know if it's the Presidents Cup, the Presidents Trophy. We just say both on this show because yeah. it's because it's the cup. It's because it's the cup. Because it's the cup. And don't exactly. forget the so, the goalie cup. Uh, Big Cat, watching that, I, I, yeah. I, I know what you're saying. Like you flash back to the moments when you've watched playoff hockey, when when your team has been involved in these overtime games, yes. and it in the moment it feels it doesn't feel fun at all. It just feels like you're on the edge of your seat. But I I do miss that sensation when of you're course. watching playoff hockey. It's it's so fun to watch, but you really wish you were involved somehow to feel the emotions. It's, oh, it's like it's like porn in that way. Absolutely, and it really is. It, it is like the overtime in in a game seven. There's just no feeling like it because you just sit there. If you lose in a game seven overtime, you sit there just staring at the TV. Like, how is it over right now? How is this finished? Like they have to be keep, they have to play more. This is not fair. And you go through yeah. all the emotions that it's hard to, to replicate in any other sport. Uh, you know, other than like maybe Joe Carter's walk off in the world series. Like that's, there's, there's not a lot that, that can replicate that feeling. It, but it's so different in hockey too, because the game is so fluid that anything can happen at any given time. Whereas if you're watching baseball, you know, okay, this next pitch could be a home run. Mm -hmm. When when your team's not up to bat, you're like, okay, now's the time where I have to prepare myself. In hockey, it's just like 30 second swings, 15 second swings, back and forth, back and forth. I'm curious to know, Jake, you are a very, a very gracious winner. You've got a history of being a gracious winner on the show. Is there anything that you'd like to say after this resounding victory? He was a he was just causing a scene. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was it was a crazy series. Uh, I'm happy for the diehard Panther fans that I know at home. I'm obviously not one of them, but they don't get this feeling often, so mm -hmm. it it's crazy. But uh, can that, I make? Yeah, go ahead. Can I make a suggestion in the spirit of of NHL playoffs? And this is the one thing that we love the most about the sport is the handshake line after every series. I think we should do a part of my take handshake line. Oh, right now, I mean, Hank and Jake. Hank yeah. and Jake. Yeah, please. To, Please, to honor the boys right in the and middle. blades. Please, let's have a handshake. Handshake Come on. line, guys. Come on. Get up Do there. it. Do it, Hank. Give a handshake. Hank's getting up. He's not so happy about this. Jake is already up, ready to go. Hank took off his... Oh, Hank took off his hat, and then Jake went in for the hug. Hank that was did, beautiful. Hank shunned the hug. It's a handshake, not want it's a handshake line, Jake. Well, sometimes they hug. Sometimes they hug. Double yeah. sportsmanship. Going back to your guys' debate, who were the two teams that sparked it this playoff season? What? Heat, yeah, the Panthers. Yeah, that's true. Florida runs yes. the world. South Florida Giant Killers. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. They are officially FAU. Giant Killers. And FAU, yep. yeah. And Miami, eight, Final eight Four. Eight seeds. Um, all right. So, any last words, Hank? Patrice Bergeron, uh, that honestly, it's it's sticking with me. It's super sad if that's his last game. Been on the Bruins 20 years. It feels like he should have won more than one cup. He's just been so good for so long. And, and the fact that he's going to retire is super, super, super sad. Yeah. 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 One little footnote on this game: uh, the Leafs have the Bruins' first rounder, so that's kind of crazy that that the Bruins lost and the Leafs kind of got a, a double win. Just if mm -hmm. you're like a hockey, if you're a real puck boy.
If you're if you're just looking at the draft as well, you got one eye on the draft, one eye on the playoffs. Always. Yeah. People think it's easy being a Boston fan. It's like it's just not. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's. I mean, that was a that was a devastating loss. Yeah. PFT. It was. I mean, I agree. I agree. It is devastating. I've been there. I watched I them lose you, Game it, Seven it at home better. too. But you do have a team that's playing tomorrow night that has, or tonight, as we're taping this tonight, that has, that's the favorite to win the NBA title. But that's pressure. That's what I was saying. The I whole know, time. but it, it is a nice. There's some nice solace in that that you can go right to the next thing. I know, but the Sixers, man, they're. Oh man! All right, well we'll you get had to some that. wiggle room. I understand that. You, it's like okay, you you already lost all your margin for error. Now if any if one team loses, you're done with the, all the playoffs. I get I get that stuff, but I will I will stand in and say shut the fuck up, Hank. Anytime you say how tough it is to be a Boston sports fan, it's uh, since this show has existed, I've watched uh, Patriots lose the Super Bowl. I've watched Celtics lose uh, the Patriots NBA win championship a Super at home. Bowl. And I've watched the Bruins lose Game Seven, and I just watched the best team the hockey Sox team of all time, World Series. Yeah, but I'm just saying, <laughs> it's not easy. Bowl. Yeah, I think well, I've watched as many you... teams lose championships as you have. It's been you... here for six months. Wait, <laughs> Hank. So, I get also, it. Hank, you've watched the Patriots win two Super Bowls, three over the Rams, and twenty-eight to oh, three, the, the yeah. biggest Super Bowl comeback of all time. Yeah. We. I was talking about the bad stuff. I didn't. Like, <laughs> I'm just saying. All right, so everyone, you know. If you're listening to this right now, please say a prayer for for Hank Lockwood. Thank you. He's going yes. through it. I appreciate He's it. He's trending on Twitter right now, which is very funny. I I, I didn't look into it, but it was ten thousand tweets. Then it just said Twitter trend Hank. That was I'm all. Sure, it said. it's not Henrik Lundqvist. It doesn't matter. It no doesn't bad. matter. No okay, Don't worry about details. it. Like Sorry. I said, it doesn't. Yep. Sometimes I'll trend on a random day, and it's because Tiger Woods like hit a random golf shot in his house in in Florida. Doesn't matter. Hank was trending. Uh, okay. Let's talk some other sports. Let's talk some other game sevens. Steph Curry put on maybe the best playoff performance he's ever had. 50 points, game seven against the Kings. Never been done in a game seven in the NBA playoffs, which is nuts. Uh, Incredible, incredible series. Incredible game from Steph. The Warriors are marching on. I, I mean, that was, we're so lucky to get to watch Steph. I was thinking about it, right? Like, we we had the uh, a few years ago where we had to nitpick Steph Curry and we came up with that he chews his mouth guard weird. That was the only thing we could find that we really like didn't like about him. Bad I don't posture. Re- like he is an incredible uh, player. Obviously, t- I mean people are saying top ten all time now. I I wouldn't disagree with that. But I and I know I might be in the minority here because I think there's a lot of Warriors fatigue, especially if one of your teams has played them in a finals or. On the way to a finals, I still love watching the Warriors play basketball, and I still love watching Steph Curry. Like, I don't – I have no hate for him whatsoever, and I was watching that game today being like, we're so lucky to get to watch a guy like this play basketball. Because you can't you can't say anything about him. You can't say that the refs give him calls. You can't say that he plays a cheap style of basketball. You can say that he ruined basketball because now every kid wants to be Steph Curry and they're hucking threes from the logo, and that's how the game's played right now. But you can't say that Steph Curry – isn't one of the all-time greats to watch. There's really nothing about his game that you can pick apart and be like, oh, actually, he's not that good. You put him on this team and he'd suck. No, you put Steph Curry on any team and they would be an instant contender. And 50 points in game seven cements it. We've got the return of... Well, the he already quarter. cemented it. He already had cemented it. But yeah, well, further cemented in my it. Opi- in my yeah. opinion, Big Cat, what we've got coming up right now is a legacy series. Yes. We've got LeBron versus Steph. Yeah. And that's going to be awesome to watch. But we also saw the return of the third quarter Warriors. Yep. And it feels like the third quarter Warriors haven't been a thing in the last couple of years. So I looked up the stats on them. So the Warriors have been, they've been known since about 2014 as being just a team that will slit your throat at the start of the third quarter. And that's how they, that's how they differentiate themselves from any other team in the NBA. They were in terms of plus minus, they were the best team in the NBA from 2014 until 2019. And that's every single – I'm not talking about like on aggregate. In the 2014-15 season, they were first place. 2015-16, they were first place. All the way through 2018-2019 season, they were first place in third quarter plus minus every single year. And then they dropped down because they had that injury year where Clay and yep. Steph were both hurt. Yep. Then they bounced back a little bit, and then they got back to being uh, number one again in 2021-2022. Then this year, they sucked again. 
for yeah. the vast majority of the year. They were they were like a, a slightly below average team in the third quarter. And then tonight they come out, they outscore them by 12 in the third quarter. I think that what we've seen is the return officially of the third quarter Warriors. And I wouldn't be surprised if this continues throughout the rest of the playoffs. Well, it, it was the, the other crazy thing from this game is that the second, third, and fourth leading scorers on the Warriors team uh, were combined 12 of 44. So that's Wiggins, Clay Thompson, and Jordan Poole. 12 of 44. If you want to just do starters, Wiggins and Clay were 9 of 35. Imagine having your two, your second and third options, scoring options, go 9 for 35 in a game seven on the road and then be like, yeah, you actually comfortably won this game. Oh, because you have Steph Curry and he can, he basically is just a get out of jail free card for anything that like could bad that could happen to the Warriors. Like, Oh, we still have Steph Curry. I also was thinking about it. I know that people don't like the Warriors for many reasons. Obviously one of them being Kevin Durant warriors, him going there. If you don't like, you didn't like the Kevin Durant warriors, which I'm not going to argue against because it, it was it was almost unfair at times how good they were. I still loved watching them because I just love like the way the Warriors play basketball is fun to watch from as a, as a basketball fan. But if you were like I hated them because of that, and taking out Hank, he's he's got PTSD from the Warriors we were talking about earlier. But taking out that, if the Warriors won the title this year, that would be objectively funny. That Steph would have five and KD would have two, and Steph would have more without KD than with him. And it's like he's KD's like almost a little barnacle on Steph, the Titanic that is Steph and his career. That would yeah, be awesome. I agree. That would be I agree. awesome. It would be, it would be funny. And also, if you beat LeBron on the way there and then came back and won another one next season and had six, I also that that would that, be funny. I, would, I, I think I think we could root for that. All I, of us. I also should just say uh, I'm unbiased, but I do have a future on the Warriors. But I I like I've never really hated. Again, I we go back to when we were trying to find a way to hate Steph. And all we came up with was that he chews on his mouth guard a lot. Like that was it. Yeah, like we, yeah. can, we, like it's just something about him. He is so much fun to watch. And this game today, you knew while you were watching it, uh, you were watching something special. Hank dis- disagrees with everything that's been said. No, in the last I'm, five I'm, I'm not. No, well, Hank's grumpy. I, I'm not even. I wasn't even listening. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's grumpy. I so I, I do put an asterisk on the series because Delhi didn't play, and Delhi's the he's the Steph stopper. That's yeah. what he's got his re- reputation on. I would have liked to see what the Kings had done with the beam if they had won at 3.30 local time. They would have lit Can it. you light the beam? Yeah. Can you light the beam during the daytime? They did it the, for the first time that the beam ever was lit was during the daytime. They Can wanted, you see it during, during no, the day? No, you can't. They wanted, I think the first beam lit in history was, I think they won a road game in Charlotte uh, on like an afternoon, on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon, and they lit the beam, and no one, no one knew what was going on. So... I'm happy though. So the war, the Kings had an incredible season. They got a lot to build on. Uh, you do have to figure out what's going on with Sabonis because there's nothing worse in basketball than watching a guy. It's he got the Ben Simmons treatment. They were just like basically giving him all the space in the world to shoot 16 foot jumpers, and he wouldn't do it. He did it a couple times, made a couple, but he missed a few. Um, but they have they have a, a bright bright future. I'm very happy. I was afraid for a moment they were going to light the beam out of like being like, what a season. We'll always mm-hmm. remember this season. They didn't because I was going to be like, that would have been the end of the beam. Uh, the only other two things I had from this game, I fucking love Kevon Looney so much. That dude is – Steve Kerr actually called him one of the best centers. I don't know if he, I'd go that far, but he had – so after the Warriors went down 0-2, he had in his in the games 20 rebounds, 14 rebounds, 22 rebounds, 13 rebounds, 21 rebounds. He averaged 18 rebounds a game in those five games. He had 10 offensive rebounds today. He is like – Every championship team, every team like this needs some of those guys that do the dirty work. And I just love watching him just get every board and hustle for every board. He doesn't even have like freak athleticism, but he's just, he knows where he's got to be and he's always fighting. And I just love watching it. And then the last thing, and we'll talk more about it with Dylan Brooks, but Malik Monk, I don't, I wouldn't say this was shit talk, but this was more like a quote that maybe you wish you had back. Uh, after the game six win, which was shocking because I think everyone thought the Kings weren't going to be able to win in uh, Golden, in, in uh, San Francisco. Uh, but he said, we knew we could run them with only one day off between games. It's an even quicker turnaround for game seven. I felt a little more on them 
they were a little t- tired, were younger than they are, going to try to do the same thing Sunday. Basically being like, these guys are old, we can do this. And uh, you saw what a championship team looks like and a championship player more than anything in Steph Curry. Yeah, so the the Kings, I think the, it's safe to say the future is bright in Sacramento, yep. in Northern California in general, but especially in Sacramento because they're so young and they're fun and they're one of the best offenses that we've seen in a very long time in the NBA. So they're fun to watch. They're going to be around for a while. Looney is is absolutely a guy that you want on a team that's going to make a deep run like a dog. He's a dog. And then you've got – you mentioned Sabonis. So we know him originally as Arvidas Sabonis' son. Correct. Right? And you remember Arvidas Sabonis, great center from back in the day. I read a story about Arvidas Sabonis that talked about his whirlwind romance that he had with Miss, I think she was Miss Lithuania. That might not even be the right country, but one of those Eastern European countries. And um, you know how he asked her to marry him? How? He left He left an engagement ring on the toilet. Love and then, it. And then she found it and she was like, oh, are you asking me to marry me? And he was like, yeah, I guess so. He never even really like asked her. He just put it on the toilet and he's like, oh, she'll find this eventually. So it was, it was a Blumpkin engagement? It was a, blum- a full-on Blumpkin engagement. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, credit to the Kings. Kings are awesome. I'm going to be rooting for them because they're fun. Or maybe there's just like a one-time fling that I had where I kind of fell in love with them for a, a short time because they they were cool for a yeah. couple games and the beam was good vibes. But I don't regret it. I know Hank's thinking because he's grumpy right now. I told you guys about the Kings. No, he was right, though. I, I, hate, right. I hate it when you guys say I, what I'm thinking. No, I, you were right. You were right. I'm not going to let him gaslight you. I was wrong. I said they weren't going to win another game. Yeah, but you so were right. you're gaslighting yourself by not no, gaslighting me. No, you were right. You were right. <laughs> I was wrong. Okay, you were wrong. Another one. Mark another one for Hank. He's a loser. <laughs> Hank, if you have any clutch gene in your life, you'll get the lottery ball today. Even oh, a so, little bit of clutch gene, he'll get it. I got a better seat, so. In, in a little bit of clutch gene, he'll get it. It'd but be so won't. funny if he got it today because it, he wouldn't even really be that happy. No, this would won't. actually be the no, perfect he, day he for him would, to get it. No, 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 no. He would be. He would. He's already f- forgotten the Bruins. He would be the happiest guy in the world. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what? It's. I got an hour and 15 minutes left until Monday. Okay, all right, and then the Celtics time. All right, so let's talk about who the Warriors are playing. The Lakers, who demolished the Grizzlies on Friday night. Uh, it worked out so poetic that uh, before the series, Dylan Brooks said, I wouldn't mind playing LeBron in a seven-game series. The legacy is there. First time back in the playoffs. Knock him out right away. That'll be a good first-round matchup for us. Uh, got knocked out in seven or seven games or six games, and then also during that series says I don't respect anyone until they give me forty. The Grizzlies lost by exactly forty on Friday night. Uh, we had afterwards LeBron with some all time uh, social media use. He so I don't really know how to describe this emoji. I think it's I think it's just trying to swear but bleeping out a swear. So he said, unlike you little swear word bleeped these are, out. These are rap lyrics. Okay. Oh, these are. All right. I'm a grown a ass Jay-Z man. Song. Big shoes to fill, grown ass pants. Pr- probably hustle with your pops. Go ask your parents. So he went Jay Z song on Twitter and then on Instagram posted. Uh, if you ever if you ever see me fighting in the forest with a grizzly bear, help the bear, uh, mm. which was awesome. And then Shannon Sharp, who gets like a just chill out man of the year. Maybe we'll put this for a takey. Uh, put this in the nominations, Jake. He commented on. LeBron's Instagram saying I'm pouring honey on you goat illegal to kill a bear unless being attacked. So there you go. Uh, yeah, he's pouring honey on LeBron in this made up LeBron bear weird thing that happened after the game, but the Lakers are good. The Lakers are fucking good and they shut, shut the Grizzlies up. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be an incredible, incredible series watching the Warriors versus Lakers. The real question now is would you, would you rather uh, pay? Would you rather have five hundred thousand dollars or have dinner with LeBron James? Mm. That's the question now. Uh, I think that LeBron is his legacy is on the line. Let's Wait, just why say is it right that? Now. Que- why is that the question? Because Jay Z. Oh, that's Jay Z. Okay. Yeah, it was a Jay Z lyric. Got it. But his legacy is on the line. I'm 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 personally putting LeBron's legacy on the line in this matchup against Steph Curry. So if Steph beats him, Steph goes up to number two all time. It's gonna be as far fun. as I'm concerned. It's going to be fucking awesome. It's every other night. It's the only series that's playing every other night. Um, The Lakers 
had five different leading scorers in the series against the Grizzlies, which is pretty crazy uh, on a team with LeBron and AD, who I think when they won the title in the bubble year, it was just basically LeBron, AD leading scores. They went Hachimura, LeBron, AD, Austin Reeves, AD, and then D'Angelo uh, scored 31 on in game six. So I, yeah, I, like I'm, I officially have retracted my statement that the Lakers aren't. They are very much live to win the title, to go deep. And now we get to see one of like if 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 you told Adam Silver you'd get LeBron and Steph in the second round, like he would be like, how much do I pay? Like this is going to be a must watch every single game NBA playoff series. And that's why I'm a little bit upset about about how the whole Scott Foster thing worked out because we're deprived of a Scott Foster NBA rigged moment. In, in uh in the Warriors game because it wasn't even it, it there were no like close calls there was nothing that Scott did to impact that game it was purely Steph I was hoping that we would get an NBA wants LeBron against Steph moment but we didn't get that I'm a little bit upset about it but yeah I'm I'm pumped I'm super excited for the uh for the Lakers series against the Warriors that's going to be awesome yes. must see TV also last thing on Dylan Brooks popcorn. he got uh fined twenty five thousand dollars for not doing media availability multiple times which rules mm -hmm. he no Respect one had a biz. worse no one had a worse playoff performance start to finish than dylan brooks like could not have scripted worse he is a complete joke and uh like a run like i actually i i think he'll have a, a career but i wouldn't be shocked if his career is just over because of this like mentally i i know that yeah. that's crazy to say but it he he could not have had a worse playoffs yeah. Yeah. No, mentally, you're right. Like you can't come back from this. The only way that you can come back from this is by putting 40 on LeBron, which he's not going to do. Right. So I, I'd say, and also I, I want to get ahead of this. I, I do not want to be old takes exposed on this because what I'm saying is correct right now, but this could end up very poorly for me. Anthony Davis looks super healthy, like the healthiest yeah. that I've seen him in a long time. Yeah. He's definitely going to get hurt now. I mean, he gets but hurt every so, game. He gets hurt he's every so game. healthy. He's yeah. so healthy. At this moment, Anthony Davis is so healthy. He gets hurt every single game. What are you going to say, Jake? Two quick things. Going back to LeBron's tweet, I looked it up. I thought it was interesting that he tweeted during the playoffs. He hasn't done the zero dark 30 23 since 2017. Yeah, he, which I mean, he broke because he liked perfect booties. Oh, really? Yeah, no, I was. it was one of the, the best stories I've ever broke. Oh, really? You, yeah, he, oh, that's he, awesome. he, he, like, he was liking... Uh, Instagram pictures during the and playoffs. He, he liked an account, Perfect Booties. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was, was when funny. Instagram still showed you what yeah. other people were like. That might have been in like 2015. Okay, or, yeah. yeah, I think it was when it when this used to be such a big deal when he would. It was when the shutdown. It was when the Cavs or, or the Heat were playing the Bulls in the playoffs. Yeah, and then uh, second, we have a little bit of Sidagami here. We yeah. have one seed represented total. So we have the what number one Nuggets. Number two Celtics, three Sixers, crazy. It's wild. four Suns, five Knicks, six Warriors, seven Lakers, eight Heat. For the first time wild. since they went to 16 teams in the postseason, it's one team with each seed advancing. That's very cool. It's wild. I take yeah. it back. It's very wild. cool, Jake. Very, it's very cool. wild. Yeah. And people are like, they should reseed. It's like opposite conferences. No. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's wild. Yeah. I, when you tweeted that, I was like, that's that's fucking cool. That's that's very cool. <laughs> that's actually yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. also crazy to see the um, – the difference, like, if I think it's like if the Knicks play the Warriors in the finals, the Knicks would have home. Yeah, court five advantage. Six. Well, is it by in the finals? Is I it think by seed or overall record. I think it's overall record. Um, and I, there was one other that was crazy. Oh, it was uh, the if the Heat played the Lakers in the finals, the Heat would have home home court advantage. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, That's crazy. Yeah, so it has been an awesome. I mean, we knew we knew it going in. Like, I don't. I know that there'll probably be some people being like the big takeaway from this, but we, we, everyone who's watching the NBA season knew that like this, these playoffs were going to be crazy. We didn't expect the Bucks to lose the Heat, but in the West, we all thought that the, you know, the Suns, the Warriors, and the Lakers were probably better than the seeds that they were playing in the first round. And that proved to be true. This might be the best Final Four ever in the Western Conference. When yeah. you look at the four teams that, that are still left, that's yeah. fucking awesome. The West is so so good, so I good. And the ratings dream, yes, ratings all dream. The board. And we should talk about the Suns and Nuggets. The the Nuggets fucking put it on them. Uh, Jamal Murray, because he was injured for what felt like forever. Because we last like the last time I think we saw him play in the playoffs was the bubble. Uh, yeah, he's really fucking good. And I don't think the Suns. Another old takes exposed. I don't know what the Suns are going to do with Jokic, Jamal Murray, pick and roll. Like, they were just doing whatever they wanted, and it was a great 
if you're a Suns hater, which I probably, yeah, I, I, I guess I'd say I don't really hate the Suns as an organization. I just am not a fan of Chris Paul. Uh, Chris Paul doing his classic Chris Paul where he's down and losing and he toes that perfect line of is he dirty or is he just like trying to be an extra competitor? I think he's usually dirty. Uh, we had that moment too, which is fun, where it's like usually just Chris Paul defeated, I'm going to try to injure someone, but if you look at it, maybe I was trying to make a basketball play. Yeah, he, he was diving at knees out there. It's, it looked like when guys used to try to tackle Gronk back in the day and they knew that they couldn't hit him anywhere above the waist and so they just aimed for his ACL and tried to take him out. That's what Chris Paul was doing to Nuggets players. So I stand my prediction, which is Nugs and Six. I think it's going to be Nugs and Six. And if their big three's cooking, then we're, then we're in business. I got nothing to worry about. Yeah, all, all uh, starters on the Nuggets scored double digits. Like, they're finally – this is finally the best version of the Nuggets through many years of having injuries and disappointing playoffs. I, I know that you don't want to overreact to one game, but I don't – like, they looked very, very good, and it looked like the Suns didn't have the answers for them. Yep, yep. Things are – everything's coming up Denver right now. I'm, I'm happy where I sit. Rado. Uh, all right, last game. Uh, Knicks Heat. So, the Fleming curse is alive. Our colleague Frank the Tank is now a Knicks fan, and the Knicks went out and lost to the Heat, blowing a – I think they were up double digits at one point. Uh, Early. Yeah. Jimmy Butler gets hurt, uh, and the big story was that Jimmy Butler gets hurt in, uh, what was it, early fourth quarter, and the Knicks spent the entire fourth quarter not going after Jimmy Butler, who was clearly hobbled and standing in the corner. They put Josh Hart on him and standing in the corner be being, being like a decoy. They were playing four and five, and the Heat outlast them. Kyle Lowry was awesome. Uh, he is like the definition of a gamer. Heat culture couldn't be more alive. I couldn't be more wrong. And I hope Jimmy Butler's okay. Yeah, uh, he had a, a pretty nasty sprained ankle. I think they went at him one time after he sprained his ankle, and then they just kind of forgot to keep attacking the guy that couldn't move, which was an interesting strategy by Tibbs. Yeah. Uh, the best part of the game was in the third quarter. We got some vintage Kevin Love outlet passes. Oh, yeah. There were like three in a row. I don't think that there's a sweeter play in basketball than Kevin Love throwing like a 60-foot outlet pass right on the money. There were three of them that that just put him in a, in a spot that only his own player could get and led immediately to a dunk or a layup. It was so sick to watch. He's they, the best in the league at that by far. I had that as a note. I was like, I just love watching Kevin Love throw outlet passes. Best because it, pass. we make it, it was – no, it was yeah. just perfect. It was – they were just like perfectly timed, easy layups – Full court passes. And that was yeah. back to his UCLA days. It was like, this guy can outlet pass better than anyone. And you saw it. Like, he, it was rejuvenized Kevin Love. It is so sweet watching when he does it because it looks like it's actually a, like almost a cheat code because there's not many guys who can do what he can do when it comes to the, the catch the rebound, turn around, perfect pass in, in stride for an easy layup. If Patrick Mahomes does this, the media won't shut up about it for a week. They're Jake, can, can we actually make a, uh, a a highlight clip, just like a compilation of all of Kevin Love's best outlet passes? I would watch yeah. the fuck out of that. I'm yeah. on it. I'll, I'll I bet you it's on, on YouTube, on Monday. but yeah. Yeah, definitely. But, but we got to add to it. Yeah. We got to update it. I'm on it, yeah. Um, yeah. Kevin Love, that best was, quarterback in the building that day. Best That's right, yeah. Oh, so yeah. I thought I thought you were going to say Aaron, the Aaron Rodgers curse. His bucks got bounced. Well, he was he at the Rangers the game, NFL. and they won. Yeah, he was at the Rangers game on Saturday night. I don't count that. Yeah. He he looks happy. I get so happy. They I got to see it twice, Rangers and Knicks, where they showed him on the Jumbotron, showed him on the telecast, and put Jets quarterback underneath. And I was like, yeah, this is awesome. This is real. Mm -hmm. He's going to love it. Uh, I also loved all the clips that they showed of, of the old fights between the uh, the Knicks and the Heat oh, the from best. back in the day, the best. And including the one where Jeff Van Gundy just wraps his entire body around Alonzo Mourning's leg like like an ankle probation monitor. Yeah, just like strapped up, trying to hold him back. That that might be the funniest sports clip of all time when when Jeff Van Gundy sprints onto the court to try to break up a fight, and he ends up just grabbing Alonzo Mourning's shin and holding on like like Winnie the Pooh trying to cr climb up to. To like a, a, a honey hive. Yeah, getting just ragdolled everywhere, and especially with his hair and just everything. It was just so perfect. Everything about it. Yeah. So funny. So good. Um. All right, so yeah, that – I – okay. I don't want to piss off Knicks fan because I do like watching them get excited, but it would be funny if they got bounced and it was like yet again they got so excited about 
one one series. But I'll, I'll enjoy allow the ride. Them to get excited, enjoy the ride. Though. They you guys won a series. That's yeah. good. You're enjoy the baby ride. steps here. Enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. What? I, I'm gonna poke my head out of the whole Knicks fan oh when they start getting God. good. What? <laughs> That's disgusting. Yeah. Well, Hank would never do that. He wouldn't. Yeah. But it was kind of like, ah, oh, shit. Billy doesn't get it. He's hor- he was saying that because he just did that with the Bruins. Uh, no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's fun. It's like the Knicks, the Knicks fans, it is fun. and it, But it is also like, I, I think it's fair when people are like, oh, too bad the Knicks fans can't hold a uh, like parade outside of Madison Square Garden because they didn't win game one. Because they do hold a parade after every win. But it is fun. Yeah. I mean, it's an electric environment. Mm-hmm. So enjoy the it ride. Is. It is. And then the reason why I was busted on, on New York sports fans in general is just because they have such a big pr- tradition of winning that when they celebrate tiny little things like this, it's hilarious. It's very funny to see the entire city going but nuts the, after like one home game win. But the Knicks you guys want a series? Get excited. The Knicks don't really have a history of winning. But they act like they do. Yeah. We were. I, I went on Chris Long's podcast, and and he was asking who are the Knicks of 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 football, and unfortunately, it is the Bears because it's like there's some history there, and then when you look into it, it's like, well, they haven't really won a lot at all ever, but they won once, so that's cool. Yeah. I think the Knicks have won twice, but yeah, it's uh they don't have really a history of strong winning in in New York. I would say the vast majority of the people who are listening to this podcast right now do not remember a time when the Knicks were good at basketball. You know what it is, though? It's New York is a basketball city. Like, like New York, New Yorkers love basketball. So I think that's where it comes through, and I do appreciate that and love watching that. That part is awesome to watch where everyone rallies around the Knicks. It's just you got to win this series because there has been a lot of hype, and you have home court, and Jimmy Butler's ankle might be busted. So yeah. now you kind of have no excuses. Like, you got to win you, this you, series. You got a window. You got a window to win right now. So Jimmy, the story is going to be Jimmy Butler's ankle, and tomorrow morning it's probably going to wake up and be like the size of a grapefruit, and that's going to be tough to play through. But and, and if, then he's going to put like somehow, forty on on them and on Tuesday night. Yeah, as long as Jimmy Butler just doesn't continue to act like Jimmy Butler, he's one of those guys where if he's hurt, I'm like he's not he's not that hurt. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let's talk uh, some NFL draft. Uh, recap and other stuff this weekend. It's brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. Sometimes the days can get so crazy that you forget to make time for fun. When that happens, you've got to choose to chill. So go ahead, say yes to midweek happy hours and catching the game after work. And while you're at it, enjoy a nice cold Coors Light, the beer that's made to chill. There's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill, and that's Coors Light. The mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. That way you always know when it's time to chill. When you're making time to chill, crack open a Coors Light's Mountain Cold Refreshment made to chill. Uh, If you're chilling on the weekend, there's a lot of playoff action. Maybe it's in the middle of the week. Maybe Monday night, Tuesday night. When you choose to chill, pair your plans with an ice cold Coors Light. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. CoorsLight.com slash take. Okay, before we actually talk NFL draft, um... How are you guys both feeling, Hank and Max? Uh, we are. It's it's D Day. We've been we've been looking forward to this moment for months, and we're here. We're finally here. Sixers Celtics game one Monday night, and beat. Max is going through it so bad. PFT. He just keeps saying like he's got to play. He's got to play. He's got to play to no one. Like I just walk into a room and Max is mumbling. He's got to play. Embiid's got to play. Um, yeah. so he's, Max is, Max he's is so it. down bad. He, he's misreading tweets that get sent to the group chat. There was one that said that his knee injury is worse than a grade one sprain that they thought it was. And Max was like, that's fine. He's fine. He'll be fine. That's just a grade one sprain. That's not that serious. Not understanding that they're saying, no, no, it's, it's worse than a grade one sprain. <clears throat> they're leaking that news out there to set expectation that he's not going to play for probably at least two games. Mm. So Max, um, it's fine. It's fine. It, it could just be, you know, wanting to get, catch the Celtics off guard. <laughs> you know? Oh, no. He, he was practicing today, he, sh- taking some jumpers. I don't know. If he if he doesn't play, it's not it's not fair. How much a, how much time <laughs> it's not fair. how much time did you spend this weekend thinking about your face being completely shaven? The sweep clause is such fucking bullshit. Just win one game. You agreed to it. Win one I game. I know I agreed to it because I have to agree to everything. No, that's not true. <laughs> yes, it is. Facts. They try and Facts. get me. 
They try to get me to do cat pets like every day. I always just say no. Two months of a soul patch. You can put is... your foot down. I put my foot down with Ray Allen. Uh, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> that said a lot. <laughs> Max, this is this is on the city of Philadelphia. You guys got to win one home game. That's that's you can't blame Joel Embiid for getting swept. You guys I, have to pull together and and win one game at home. I have a question for Max. Yeah. What a, would you rather have had Joel Embiid go off, go off in that game at the end of the season versus Celtics, basically winning him the MVP, or would you rather have him when the when the three seed was already they already locked into the three seed. It didn't matter if they won or lost that game, or. Would you have preferred he rests and then he could have played, even if it was just one more game against the Celtics in the playoffs? I don't give a fuck a about the MVP. I've I've oh, said that. So B. But <laughs> but you but like that like that doesn't mean anything. Like him play, like him playing in a regular season game. What am I supposed to be like? Oh yeah, one plus one equals two. If he doesn't play in that regular season game, yeah, where that's he played, how it works. That's not how it fucking works. No, that's how it works. No, it's not. Yeah, that was wear and tear it's just on a his Would knee. you rather? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's the, like there is no they, would you rather. Factor fishing. No, he's experienced it, fatigue it, in playoffs before. Fact. fact. So don't it's you like, think it would be smart when you're already locked into the three seed? It's a it coincidence. It's a. It is a bad coincidence, like coincidence that he happens always. Every year. I know what happens every year. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the. Uh, it's like how Trump thought that the he thinks the human body is like a battery, and so every every. Like time you run or sweat, that's just energy that you'll never get back. Yeah, that's what Hank's that's saying for this Joel Embiid thing, where it's like, oh well, if he hadn't played in that game, then he would have at least gotten you guys one game against the Celtics. <laughs> no, you, it's, no, you he did go off though. That was a it's sick science. Game. You might suck if you get swept. Now so, we should right, also you, address yeah, the clause yeah. in the, in the sweep bet because we talked after I that was the last show that we did, so that would be Thursday night. We talked after Thursday. I don't remember and, this at all. The soul patch bet has two in room, clauses in it. But and I think, no, but they're Hank, fair. They're, you'll agree, I think they're fair agree. clauses. And I think the AWOs will appreciate these clauses. Big Cat is my oh, 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 yeah. PFT and I aren't even involved in this series. Yeah, yeah you're making yeah. clauses without me being but, in the room. The, the, the sweep bet is a one-sided bet. It is a <laughs> one-sided bet, and it is complete bullshit. Sweeps are usually pretty one-sided. Hank, the Sixers Hank. are 10-point <laughs> dogs Hank, tomorrow. Will you, will you, would, you, would you meet? Max halfway and count a 4-1 Sixers win is also in the sweep clause. Yes. There it is. Deal. Okay. So okay. there you go. I just got I you like an that. extra game. So it's I'm going to make a, a graphic for everyone for all the clauses and yeah. all the scenarios. So that's a it makes fair. It clear. Well, so that's a fair clause that we just added. That's for you. Fair, uh, no, that's a fair clause. So fair are clause. you a little bit of, uh, you know, I guess that doesn't really do anything to make it so that the Sixers won't get swept. No. <laughs> It just makes it like you're, the, slightly. The giggle that, that you get during like just seeing these things is so sick. <laughs> you're, you're, I mean, I, you said title town. <laughs> I know I said that. I know I said <laughs> you that. Can't get, you can't it, get upset about a sweep clause I when am, you said title town. I Max immediately was walked it back. Floating around the office on a cloud for the for when Celtics blew game five and the Sixers had advanced. <laughs> right. Like Max was basically on vacation in Puerto Rico just chilling with a drink in his hand being like, oh, NBA championship, we won. Because <laughs> the Celtics have yet to advance. And we have. <laughs> they controlled their own destiny. Hey? Yeah. All right. So, yeah, the clauses. So, they're – yeah. We PNT and I aren't involved in this series. We are involved in the bet with you guys, but we did point out after you walked out of the room, Hank, PFT has to go to his dad's memorial, so having a soul patch at that would probably be bad luck. So he can do the soul if he has to do the soul patch, it's after that. And I Fair, pointed out I guess. that I am Thank you, Hank. I am going to have uh, my, nice my third child at any moment now, and I said that I too would like to do the soul patch after the third child arrives and we take the first picture as a full family because I will get fucking murdered if I have a soul patch in that picture. I guess fair as well. Okay. So okay, I will thanks. still do it if I don't get over 16, which I am rooting for him beat not to play because 16 and a half points for, for, for my guy B-Ball Paul. We can do that in one game. Also, there's an there's an Embiid clause as well. What? <laughs> there was. There was an Embiid there clause. There was? What was it? That if Embiid doesn't... <laughs> He has to he has Think to play it. two Think games or something. What for what? Like if 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 he doesn't play in two games, that it doesn't count. Wait, how many <laughs> players are on a basketball team? <laughs> when when did this clause happen? We talked. Can someone back me up? Does someone else remember this? 
I swear there was an Embiid clause. I mean, if Embiid doesn't play the whole fucking series, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. Tatum shouldn't shouldn't get to play. All you got to do, <laughs> okay? Will you agree on that? <laughs> hey, no. Make sure Tatum, that Tatum, Tatum doesn't play. <laughs> Tatum runs his sprints in the off season. He's ready for these runs. <laughs> Hank, will you do everything in your power to make sure that Tatum doesn't play, just in fairness? That's the clause. No. It's just you got to win one game. Yeah, it's really simple. Win one game. Oh, my God. I you, uh, Whatever. You had confidence that you were going to win this series a month ago. A week yeah, ago. When the MVP is on the, is on the fucking floor. You don't care floor. about MVPs. I, I'm just saying <laughs> the best player in the league not playing makes a difference. Fact or fiction? <laughs> I know you're doing the fucking giggle. I know you're doing it. Okay, you just you made me laugh. You made me laugh. You're a funny guy. All right, so we're set. What's the uh, whatever? Is there even someone to blame for the injury? Like, how did it happen exactly? I think it's because well, Max has this theory that he knows how to fall, but he always gets injured. So I don't think it makes sense. No, it's a good theory. I don't know. It's a good theory. No, it's not a theory. It's just a fact. No, he, Max is like, oh yeah, and Bede learned that he needs to fall more. So that he won't get injured, yet he always gets injured. No, he was so healthy all I was, year. Yeah, I was doing some uh, some research today. I just typed in Embiid online and was looking at videos, and I was like, oh, here's Embiid at practice. I was like, oh, fuck, he's at practice. He's probably playing. He was <laughs> stationary, literally did not move his legs, just like shooting like – that's no. something. He was Shots jumping. From two feet away. He, was, he jumping. was not jumping. There was there was minimal air, but he those feet were getting off the ground. All right, I'll say this for like a full your, body cast putting a jump shot. I think this is a fair Embiid clause. If Embiid does not play at all in this series and you get swept, no, 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 no. you you can you can do one month. If he Deal. does not play a single game in this series, that's I fair. agree to that. That's fair. I think I you think it was three. No, I just what? Wait, actually, no, that's the same thing. Yeah. So Wait, no, 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 if, no, 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 If Embiid no. plays we, in one game, I'm going to go back and check the tapes. I'm yeah, going to go ja- back and check the tapes. Okay, you check the tapes. You I that. think that we said that if he sits three, even if he sits three out of no, the four. I don't think so. I'm going to check, really check, check the tapes. I'm going to check the tapes. I'm going to check the tapes because I'm now, gonna make an I, I'm now, you're making it, now you're making it worse. You're going to make an AI version of Pardon My Tape. Two months of a soul patch. This is where the, I will say this though, again, like the tough part about being a Boston sports fan is like, the Bruins tonight give me a little less confidence. Yeah, yeah. Won't like I'm not gonna get ahead of myself. Like two months. Like you'll you'll get sick of my soul patch face after like a week. <laughs> we'll decide. Two months okay, we'll decide. is so there, long. Yeah. There is a, a very real possibility that after like a week of seeing Max with soul patch, we're just like bets no, off. No, no. We'll decide. We'll decide. <laughs> we'll all have to decide. How about me and Hank fight instead? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you. One thing about you, about Max. Yeah. All right. Uh, NFL draft. Uh Will Levis finally got picked. He's going to the Tennessee Titans. Uh, we also saw. I mean, it, it was it was crazy that there was. It felt like there was a lot of second round big names that went. Uh, where did Hendon Hooker go? I actually totally Hendon Hooker Detroit. Detroit to the Lions. Detroit. Okay, that's a good pick. Um, we had. Uh, it, it, yeah, like I, I we said it on Friday that we miss when the draft is all one day. Because, like, on Saturday you wake up and you're like, oh, yeah, the draft is still going on. This is still happening right now. Um, but we remind everyone every year that draft grades mean absolutely nothing. They're the funniest thing. You always want to go and look and find your team and be like, how does everyone think we're doing? They mean nothing. No one knows how these players are going to play. Uh, the the one we always go back to is the 2012 Seattle Seahawks. Uh, when Bleacher Reports, someone wrote, after one of the worst picks in the first round I can ever remember, the Seattle Seahawks didn't draft any positions in need or draft for the future. Pete Carroll's proving why he didn't make it to the NFL the first time. Not only was Bruce Irvin a reach at number 15, the Seahawks proved they were oblivious to their madness by celebrating their selection. As if the day wasn't bad enough, Seattle selecting Russell Wilson, a QB that doesn't fit their offense at all, was by far the worst move of the draft with two with the two worst moves of the draft, Seattle is the only team that received an F on draft day. Um, their picks that year were Bruce Irvin, Bobby Wagner, Russell Wilson. Yeah, so the Bobby Wagner thing sometimes gets lost because Bleach yeah. Report doesn't mention that. And their strong take, but Bobby Wagner, one of the best linebackers of maybe forever in yeah. the NFL. And then Russell Wilson, obviously, like not fitting their system, yeah. the vaunted Seattle Seahawks quarterback system prior to Russell Wilson. I think their backup at the time was... Um, oh, it was a dude from uh, from Green Bay. Yeah. Why is his name escaping? LSU. Now it's going to kill me. me. Too. Matt. That's no. going to kill me. Yeah. 
Matt Flynn. Matt Flynn. Matt, Matt Flynn. Flynn. Yeah, yeah. He, Matt he Flynn lit up, after, he lit up after Lions. the game against the Lions. Seventeen. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, the the grades mean nothing. But I will say that on paper, Philadelphia is doing something very smart, yes. and that's just drafting every single Georgia defensive player because they had the best defense maybe of all time in college football. Maybe some of those Hurricanes defense from the early two thousands were better, but. That Georgia defense was so sick, nasty. So they have Jalen Carter, Nolan Smith. Then they have uh, Kelly Ringo, Jacoby Dean, and Jordan Davis. And they got DeAndre team. Swift. And they got DeAndre Swift, too. So they're building, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're building the Georgia of the North in Philadelphia, which is a smart move. Uh, I, I actually think that that's a good draft strategy to have. I know that Kirby Smart, his, the way that he scouts players, he learned that from Bill Belichick. Yep. And Bill Belichick's method of scouting players is pick the guy with the biggest ass. Yeah. And so Kirby is recruiting guys with big asses. Now how he's drafting guys that Kirby has already been staring at their asses for three seasons. So yeah. the Eagles feel like that they made some good moves just by getting all those guys back. To, it's going to be tough for, I guess, Jalen Hurts. He has a history with, with Georgia, too, as well. But just getting his ass kicked by them for a half. Um, but I don't know. If I, if I played for the Eagles and I wasn't, uh, Georgia Bulldog, I'd feel a little bit left out by now. Yeah, I mean, it is. it does feel like the Eagles won the draft again. None of this matters. I We were going to have uh, our friend Old Takes Exposed on before the draft, but obviously our schedule got pretty crazy. We, we I think we should do a Mount Rushmore with him uh, sometime this summer, but I was looking. He had, a, he had a nice thread of post-draft grades and everything. I'll just read a couple that are proved to everyone. Like, what I would say to anyone who's uh, a diehard uh, fan of their team – just go and find the best grade you can find and just go with that because it means nothing and you have no idea how these guys are going to pan out. Obviously, some of these drafts sucked. We won't know for a couple of years, but uh, right now in the moment, like I know everyone is trashing the Lions because, yeah, probably picking a, a, a running back at 12 is a little weird, but you don't know how they're building their roster. Like They could work out and they could look like geniuses, just like picking Russell Wilson and, and uh, Bobby Wagner. Bruce Irvin worked out pretty well for the Seahawks, but here's a couple funny ones. Um, so in 2011, the someone from a uh, Houston newspaper wrote Texans will rue the night. They took pizza boy, JJ Watt over Nick Fairley, Houston lover. That's a pretty good one. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was one that was uh, after I'm pizza a boy from now on <laughs> after the Cowboys took Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith should be a solid, productive player, but he's no game breaker. He's what Herschel Walker has slumped into, a plodding straight-ahead type who won't outrun anyone. Turned out to have, uh, what, the most yards in NFL history? Of all time. Yeah, of all yeah. time. Uh, Greg, great offensive line, though. Uh, writer Greg Bedard wrote, People are high on Arizona tight end Gronkowski. I don't see it at all. So there's, I mean, the, the, this one was from way, way back. Bruce Smith, uh, after he was selected by the Bills, uh, Bruce Smith, Virginia Tech. Smith is a happy-go-lucky guy who tends to be lazy. He also likes to eat. That guy's in Canton now. Um, so, yeah, pretty much every everything that happens after uh, the draft is bullshit. There was a, he also included a Fox Sports poll uh, that said grade the pick. Eagles select Jalen Hurts in second round pick 53. It was 47% uh, voted in F. So any, any draft instant reaction from the draft, uh, means nothing. So just tell yourself that you have high up. Like I, the Bears draft, I basically was like, yeah, they got a couple guys who should be starters, and they have a lot of upside guys, and they have guys that should fit Eberflus's system. And that's Dude. all cliches, and that's cliches for a reason because I have no fucking idea how it will go. The draft grades are so funny because they're just basically the guys that are in charge of their website's draft situation. Right. Grading teams on how smart they think they are themselves. So it's it's like if you draft according to what I put on my big board, you're going to get a high grade. Right. And the people that are making these mock drafts are not NFL GMs for a reason because they're not that good at it. And so they're giving out awards based on how stupidly they would perform at the draft. So it's a big circle trick. Everyone's they're just jacking themselves off. Yeah, uh, I do. That being said, I do have a baby Gronk alert. Oh, I think that we I think I've got my guy that I'm going to be calling the next baby Gronk. And it is another Georgia guy. It's Darnell Washington. I think that dude, he, he got drafted by the Steelers. I think in three years, we're going to be like, wow, we were all huge morons for not taking that guy higher. 
He's because just, I know he's hurt. Yeah, it's I know his he's injuries. Been, he's been, he's yeah. been banged up. And there was another great tight end that they had at Georgia that got caught on a shitload of touchdowns, and he's probably going to go in the first round next year. Bowers. But Darnell Washington is an absolute freak. He's six seven, I think. Yeah, and like two sixty five. And every time I saw him play in college, I was like, this dude should be in the NFL when he was like fourteen years old. This guy's a freak. Yeah, he's he's a monster. It really is just his knees. But like Gronk, Gronk had the back injury. And that's why he slipped. I agree. I mean, he's going to be the – the and, and his blocking is insane. So even if he's not a great – like if he's not catching touchdowns and stuff, you could be right just by the fact that it's – I love an offense that has a tight end like that where it's like, yeah, we just have an extra lineman out there at all times. Yeah, he's sick. Also in other Georgia news, Stetson Bennett got drafted by the Rams. Fourth round. Fourth so congrats round. to Stetson. But I believe uh, his former teammate Matt Stafford is the current quarterback of yes. the Rams. Yes, yes, he actually they they uh, I think shared a room freshman year together. Yeah. Um, the other the other funny thing that happened right before the second round, my guy Jim Irsay, owner of the Colts. Yeah. I still have to buy Colts season tickets. I, I forgot about that when the the Commanders officially sell. Um, my guy Jim Irsay tweeted out just basically, "What if we took Will Levis with our pick <laughs> in the second round?" After they had drafted Anthony Richardson, you have to imagine that Richardson was probably not that, not that psyched. But listen, Ursa is going to go gremlin mode. You have to understand. The sooner you understand that, the better. If you're Anthony Richardson, you're in a very unique situation with a unique owner. And the weird thing about it was, I thought to myself, I would probably do that. I would probably take a quarterback with every pick. Yeah. Until I found one that worked. Every yeah. year, just get it. Get a new quarterback. Because if you have a decent quarterback in the NFL, you're going to be good. And then you can f you can fill in the rest of the holes later. And in a silver lining to Will Levis, might be good that he got drafted the second round. We mentioned yes. that you're going to you're going to be a free agent one year sooner. And he got drafted to a team with a better situation. I think the Titans, they looked like shit towards the end of the year. They've lost some of their playmakers. They don't have a lot of help on the outside. But they've got Derrick Henry. You're going to be asked to run a shitload of play action. Ryan Tannehill looked good in that system. If Will Levis just kind of fits into that mold and develops, he can develop a little bit slower than you would expect some other guys to. Um, but Will Levis, can, it, since he's a second round pick, he'll have, he won't be expected to start necessarily in his first year unless Ryan Tannehill gets injured with that's never happened. Um, but it's a better situation. Plus you have no state income tax in Tennessee. Yeah. So congrats to Will Levis. You made a lot of money. Yeah. And uh, I think the Titans drafted a ton of, offense this year so yeah they drafted uh they actually drafted only offense so there you go running back yeah, tight right. end ta two tackles wide receiver so they're uh they're trying to rebuild that side of the ball so uh, yeah i mean it sucked for him it, it sucked that he was told to come to the draft and that he was going to be you know a high pick and it sucked to watch that on thursday night for him but at the end of the day if he's good and he can prove that he's good he will have the last laugh, and that's all that matters. Yep. Like it's it's kind of to him. Ursay also said that he would have taken him at four. The Colts would have taken him at four if Anthony Richardson was off the board. Damn that that actually is mean to say to, to Will Levis because yeah. he's like, damn, yeah. how much money? Ursay also did he not say should we do it like a Montana Young situation? Just yeah. just yeah. ignoring the fact that Montana was a Hall of Famer and had won many Super Bowls before Steve Young showed up. Yeah, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. <laughs> Big Cat, all he's saying is just you. You just have to take Jim Mercy based on his vibes at yeah. the time, and and his vibe was in the right place. Um, there was. Uh, I actually have a hypothetical for you. Okay, it's kind of like a, a list, a ranking, because Bryce Young obviously taken first by the Panthers. The Panthers tweeted out on Friday, uh, "We've got our guy Bryce Young." Essentially, uh, there's a picture of him, and it said that he is one of them ones. Mm. And that's a new term. That's a new term. And I've thought that I had to update my big board in my power rankings on on which one of these terms is the best. So right now I've got him number one. I've got top two and not two number two. Mm. I've got one of them ones number three. Goaded four like that five. One of one six. Different seven. Ooh. And then that dude is eight. I think difference too low. So you think different should be a little higher. So maybe we can flip one built of one different. and different. Yeah, built different too. Like that's yeah, I think it's got to be a little bit higher, especially because it's used a lot more, which makes it funnier. Because not everyone can be built different. Although I guess everyone is built different technically, like DNA wise. We're all snowflakes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, one of them ones could be taken literally. There were thirty-one ones this year. 
Yeah, that's first true. First round picks. Yeah, that's true. So true. he is. A lot of yeah, people so who aren't wearing number one. Ones. He's literally Emmanuel one of them Forbes, ones. One of them ones. One of them ones. Yeah. Uh, last two I want to just share from Old Take Exposed. I forgot these two. Just Browns edition uh, from Brendan Bowers. Uh, don't know where you guys will be in 20 years, but I'll be in Canton for Trent Richardson's Hall of Fame speech. That one was great. And then Hugh Jackson on QB Cody Kessler in 2016. You have to just trust me on this one. <laughs> Isn't that the meme? Like, dude, source, dude, trust me. Yeah, just trust me on this yeah. one. Trust me on this one. So, yeah, the draft is fun. We love the draft. Uh, there will be teams that we look back and we're like, holy shit, they got all these guys. Hopefully it's your team. I'll say right now, you listening right now, it's your team. It's specifically your team, except for the Packers. It's not your team. Shout out uh, Sean Clifford, who had a bunch of tweets being like, go Bears, which I love that. And he also had the worst setup of anyone ever. They were projecting the draft on a yellow painted wall somewhere in State College for Sean Clifford's draft party. Let's go. And uh, he's on the Packers now, so I hate him. That's tough. Yeah. Has there ever been a, a projection screen that actually delivers on what it promises to? Because I haven't seen it. It's yeah, it's it's basically if you have like a home movie theater, right? Like you have to have like yeah. the perfect lightings and stuff. But I don't trust but them. It, I that's one technology no. that I never will trust. It's never going to work. 3D technology in sports will never work. Mm -hmm. uh, but definitely the projection screen. That is every time I see one of those, I'm just like, give me a TV that's a quarter of that size in high definition. I watch that every time. That I can I can turn up the brightness when we're, I'm watching Game of Thrones. Like give me that. Yes, that's all I need. Uh, okay, one more Sh nugget. Yeah. Wild meter, Joey Porter. Oh Jr., yeah, first pick. Yeah, Joey round. Porter on on the we, Steelers. We we called that I think on Thursday's show. Yeah, like they they had to do it. Had that was always he was always going to be a Steeler. If he yes. was going to get drafted to another team, then the clock would just start on when he would sign with the Steelers as a free agent. Yep, yep, yep. he had to do it. Um, oh, and also uh, I love whenever a wide receiver QB combo gets drafted to the same team. So shout out the Chargers because they got Max Duggan and, and Quentin Johnson. So that's kind of cool. Cause you just, Keywords. it's the same way. It's the same way you do it when you, when you're drafting your fantasy team, you're like, I'm going to draft the QB and the wide receiver from the same team. That way, if they score, I get double the points and yeah. just completely eliminating from your mind that when you get to the playoffs and they get shut out in like a snow game, you lose, but that doesn't matter. It's fun. Yeah. It worked for the Colts and they got Andrew Luck and Kobe Fleener. Yeah. They're roommates. Yes. Like, oh, they've got, they know, they know each other better than they know themselves. Yeah. They're boys. Um, Okay. Before we do who's back, a quick word from our friends at Hims and Hers. Who hates going to the doctor's office, boys? What is your least favorite part, Hank? Just going? Dentist. Solve it. Dentist. Uh, I hate the waiting rooms with the gross magazines. Who even reads magazines anymore? I don't. I don't read anything. I hate physically going there, the harsh lighting, the awkward conversation. Going to the doctor sucks. Let's just be honest. So if you're struggling with ED, hair loss, or your mental health, and you thought the only solution was getting in your car and heading to your doctor's office... I'm here to tell you that you are wrong. The HIMSS process is convenient, 100% online, and doesn't require insurance. Whether you're looking for support for performance in the bedroom, hair loss, or your mental health, HIMSS can help. At 4 slash PMT, you get access to medical providers and trusted treatments for ED, hair loss, and anxiety 100% online if prescribed. HIMSS will ship to you for free in discreet packaging. It's that simple. Getting help. Shouldn't be hard with hymns. All it takes is one click to get started. So go to forhymns.com slash PMT today. No doctor's office visit or insurance required. Getting started today at forhymns.com slash PMT. Find the support you need for treating ED, hair loss, and mental health all in one place. Get started today at forhymns.com slash PMT. That's forhymns.com slash PMT. Okay. Hank, who's back of the week? Uh, my who's you, if you have any clutch gene, just going to remind you again. My who's back of the week uh, is getting duped, fake videos. Although, I mm. I don't know if this is confirmed duped, but Travis Kelsey was at oh, a yeah. concert. No, Billy got duped. Billy got duped. A lot hard. of people did. Hard. He, hard. He was at a concert. He was holding what appeared to be the Lombardi trophy. I think anyone with a brain would have noticed it was fake, but he chugged Correct. a beer off it and then spiked it as hard as he could. And some people thought it was the real Lombardi trophy instead of disrespectful. I was shaking. If it was real, it would have been even the you know, everyone was comparing he wants to be Gronk. Gronk was funny when he tried to, you know, bunt a baseball off it, but that was kind of incidental contact. He wasn't outwardly spiking the trophy. 
but it was pretty obviously fake. Very fake. And Billy said, yeah, well, going to be honest, this is disrespectful to the game. We also had the double, the combo. Of, uh, there was a lot the, of people that got with the Mensa Dude. meeting. Will Compton and Billy Football being like, "This is fucked up." No, 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 and no, no. As no, soon no. as that happened, no, I was that, like, "Okay." The thing is, it was probably his personal trophy that he was given. That's still mm. like a real huh? Lombardi. Every player gets a replica. What do you mean? Given what do you mean? Them. Probably. That to me sounds like it wasn't. Every player gets a replica. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Really? I that's I was. I look, look, look. I was reading up on it. It was definitely a team issued, like. Like the teams usually give out a Lombardi <laughs> to each player on the team. Okay. Plus no, I don't think that's, there's no. I, I think I, there, I think the true. team gets a replica that they get to keep. No, the team gets the actual one. Right, no, but this no. wasn't the actual. They're making one. I don't think 60 we know. Trophies? I don't think we know enough about the. No, Lombardi we know that trophy. was not no. the Lombardi trophy. But do we that know if it was a team one. issued trophy replica? <laughs> what that does that case? mean? No, no, like they give out sixty like replica Lombardis of the one that they won. They like, do. No, players, I, no, that's what I no, saw no, from the thing. No, I don't. What really, thing? I'm, I'm what pretty thing? sure this is like I could be wrong. This is like from the thing. I saw it. I was doing some research. Some reply guy, reply guy research. Billy's Billy, right. I'm pretty sure let's it goes like this. They give, they give, they give the team the replica trophy, and each so team when, gets to keep so a replica on, trophy hold on, hold on. in we'll their call. trophy ca case. When Clark and then Hunt, yeah, Max, there's one. Max, t say what you find. It says, no players do not all receive their own Lombardi. However, they are given a mini replica of the trophy. A mini. Yeah, so, that's not the but I think that's what he was chugging off of. Oh, Edelman didn't pick up. But there's, I don't, still, still, if it's like, imagine, like, I don't know. Just was like uh, growing that, up. That looked like an exact grow, size trophy. I the, I think it's bigger. The one that Clark Hunt. The only reason I kind of in my head remember this was Saturday night. In my head, I <laughs> so I we had just seen Clark Hunt come out. It on was stage. five thirty seven p.m. that you tweeted. <laughs> It was, yeah, it, Saturday. <laughs> it was it was Saturday after five. Okay. Okay. So right. uh, we're okay. coming. Clark Hunt dropped off the third <laughs> trophy that they had in this whole ceremony, and in my head, I thought it was at the draft, and Travis Kelsey had the trophy that Clark Hunt had just brought out. So in my defense, but still, I don't know you grew up wanting to like win a Lombardi trophy. That was like aggressive towards the trophy. Like Gronk, like also Gronk's Gronk. He like runs hard. Travis Kelsey like kind of avoids contact yards after hey, the catch. Juan. Jules, you're you're on part you're on part of my take right now. We got a question for you. All right, let's hear it. Does every player get a replica Lombardi trophy issued by the team when you win the Super Bowl? Have to buy it. Okay, you have to buy it. Uh, but you can buy it? You can buy an actual Is it full size? Of the Tiffany's trophy. Okay, cuz you saw the the Travis Kelsey spiking it. Billy Billy was he didn't sleep after he saw this video. He said it, he, football's basically ruined forever. So we, we we were explaining to him that wasn't the real trophy, but it could be a replica that he bought. It could be a replica that he bought. And then also, does Billy know that it's a new trophy every year? It's not like, like the Stanley Cup or anything? Yeah, but yeah. He, he, use it. he says he knows that. But I know yeah. there's 56. Yeah, he knows there's 56. They just replace it. Have you bought any of the replicas? I haven't. I, I, didn't, I, I didn't buy a replica trophy. I got. I had the ring. That was. That was plenty of enough. Yeah. Do Do guys buy the replicas? Some guys. I, I know some people that have bought it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that helped a lot. I think Patrick Chung may have bought one. Okay. And not... Ninkovich, Ninkovich is a guy that probably bought one too. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sh can you still buy one? Uh, I don't know. So like, right when they do like the ring sizing, so. Right after you win the Super Bowl, you go back, you clear out the lockers, and then all the football operations people are, like, chasing every guy before they leave to get ring size, and then you get ring size, and then there's also a catalog of everything that you can buy along with that. Like, I bought my mom a pendant. Got it. Or you, you go buy your dad, like, your, your dad something, like, you know, a pen. There's a bunch of stuff that you can buy. And the trophies on there as well. Okay, all right, that clears it up. Thank you. So, are huh. you? Do you think football can still exist after uh, Travis Kelsey did that? Yeah, but didn't didn't Gronk already do that? Yeah, What's Gronk 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 de dented one. But that was an accident. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but that was an accident. That was oh. cool. All right, well, thank you, Jules. We miss you. All right, boys. All right, see ya. He threw the pitch. That yeah. dented. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, but so are you okay with? 
knowing that this wasn't the real Lombardi? No, you know, I think it's. I think w- Will Compton relates because uh, as someone that you never guys got don't have brains. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Hey, hey, hey. So because like, like I don't know. I no, got Will, nowhere Will close just, to professional Will, football. But like, Will I just saw your tweet and was like, "Oh, I can get numbers by jacking this tweet." Oh, he. That's exactly what happened. Wait, wait. He jacked my. <laughs> when did he tweet? He tweeted after he you. He jacked being my like, tweet. This is fu- this is cur- the the Chiefs are cursed. Jesus, he really is jacking all this stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no. But yeah, well, I think I think it was not a real. The real all right, here's party. here's a second question for you then, Billy. Brian Dable. Yes. Vaping or not? Uh. So I heard- there's a video from the war room of what appears people online were saying Brian Dable hitting like a weed pen. No, his, what it looked like, but he was like eating a piece of beef jerky. Oh, no, so I was actually knowing how Brian Dable is and he's a New Jersey resident. If you noticed in New Jersey bodegas recently, they got horny vapes. Do you think Brian Dable's going to bodegas? I have not noticed that. They they yeah. have like yes. They, you so, think so? Yeah. 100%, I think he probably yeah. lives in a suburb and is not going to bodegas. I think he's going to Hoboken once in a while. Okay. Anyway, you go into these bodegas, they're trying to get you to try Kratom. They're like, yo, check out these new vapes for getting horny. And, and Dable there's a was guys like, and girls one. Yeah. So he's yeah. probably getting horny during the draft. And that's a very easy explainable thing. I thought it was I think again, I the, I watched both just the videos. Yeah. Well, no, it was he was eating something. Yeah. I that it's uh, someone sees it online. It's like, oh, look at Brian Dable hitting a weed pen. And but it's, I'm okay it's with funny that to one. imagine him hitting a weed pen in the draft room. But yeah. there's a zero point zero percent chance he was. McDaniel's okay. was hundred percent stoned. I'm okay with that one, <laughs> dude. <laughs> he just, dude. Some guys smoke weed and like helps them focus. I don't. I don't understand think those NFL people, coaches are those people. I, well, Mike McDaniel thinks a new breed. Yeah. Yeah, but new, you got to be careful, Billy. Just a little bit of coaching. When you say a hundred percent, that means a hundred percent. Listen, yeah, but it's in, come on. Bill is just shooting tweets off. We won't even talk Dude, about I'm his fu- Katrina tweet. <laughs> Your Honor. Okay, for the amount of nine eleven jokes there are, New Orleans can deal with one Will Levis <laughs> Levy tweet. <laughs> like, come on. What was the tweet? Uh, uh, something just, about when you can't stop the rush, you can't have a Levy in New Orleans. It was yeah. It was. I mean, I had no problem with it. Yeah, but there were some people who had if PFT with did it, it would have done numbers. Yeah. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I would never I would never have done that joke. Not because of the distastefulness, because it didn't even work with Levis and Levi's and Levis. It's close enough though. <laughs> he had to edit it too. This, this, is, what, this is what Billy does. Well, the seat, this is what edit, Billy does. The editing what, was when like, he gets when Billy gets in hot water about anything. He's like, no, happen. Will Compton did it. No, PFT would have done it if he had done it. If this would have happened, if things would have happened completely differently, <laughs> no, 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 no. And people would have reacted completely differently. No, I'm using the new Twitter edit feature, so for people who like don't get the joke, they'll probably go look at the edited. Tweet yeah. and be like, oh, that's what it means. Listen, Billy, I had your back. That I, I think that there is selective outrage, yeah. uh, online that you just gotta ignore. I mean, I got outraged by the freaking trophy getting slammed. Well, that was just stupid. I mean, I, I responded. I was the, like, I'm shaking because I, I saw it and I was shaking. I just, I really, it kind of pissed me off because, <laughs> like, yeah. I well, would at least, yeah, at least you didn't post it on any main social accounts, right? Who? We didn't post it on anything, right? No, we did. No, oh, memes did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Travis. I mean, he's doing numbers. The real story is Travis Kelsey is kind of becoming a villain, which is good because Mahomes is, is incapable of being a villain. I I still love Mahomes. He wins Super Bowls. Travis Kelsey will take that that for. I have one other one. Someone else might have this, so if you do, feel free to to speak up. But uh, feel good stories was my other one. Drew Maggie, Pirates player. Yes. 33 years old in the in the minors for like 10 or 13 years or something something crazy finally got called up got a single and a double first hit was an rbi got a another at bat in the ninth uh hit a double and then i was reading an article that said that's probably gonna be the only game he plays dude he's batting 500 keep him up that's crazy that yeah also feel good story the chiefs fan who got to present a a pick was what's his name who goes James Drowse. James Drowse. Yeah, he's that the, was he's awesome. The, he's the what happened kid. Yes, that was awesome, awesome moment. That's like those are the sports moments. You're like, this is why I fucking watch sports and, and go through all this pain uh, because of moments like this. This is cool. That was meme saying something that I have no idea what the what happened. Thing I is. know who he's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. You've Score one that? for me. I need to I need to come back after the Jay-Z. Boston Bruins, what happened? (laughs) (laughs) You just got memed in real life. Damn. Damn. All right, PFT, you're who's back. (laughs) 
my who's back <laughs> that is was awesome. Max did it so Max, well. Max, <laughs> use that confidence for the series. Yeah, no, the Sixers are going to win. I think Tobias Harris goes off for 30 tomorrow. Okay, that's, there that's, we go. That's, put that's it in, go. Put yeah. it in yeah. the sports book. 76ers. <laughs> okay. PFT. My who's back is the NFL schedule because they did the release of the NFL schedule release today where Schefter said, hey, it's going to come out, I think, next Thursday. But I always love that day where we where we get uh, officially lead. Uh, th- the word is leaked to Adam Schefter, who then leaks when the initial leak of the schedule is going to happen. So set your clocks. You're all going to go 11 and five, maybe. No, wait, sorry, 11 and six yeah. or 10 and seven next year. Or if Those you're Stu Finer, that you look at. if you're Stu Finer, everyone's going to go. Uh, what do you have like 10 and seven? Everyone going 10 and seven. Yeah, it could happen. You never know. Yeah. Um, so I, I also, when I see this come out, I, I try to predict what the first game of the season is going to be. When you look at which teams play which divisions next year, I think I'm going to put my pin in this one. I think it's going to be the Eagles and the Jets. Ooh. Okay. To start the season, either that or Chiefs Cowboys. It's always the winner. Yeah, it's usually the winner. Okay, so Pretty in sure that the case, Chiefs play the Eagles next year. Yeah, it's so going to be could be a rematch. I think it's going to be Chiefs Cowboys then. Um, we it's May 11th. May 11th, I think, is the official date that they set. So get ready. I, I can't wait. My other who's back is uh, the XFL because we've got our championship set up. DC Defenders, Kings of the North, going to the XFL championship game that we've been just clamoring for. So it's going to be the DC Defenders against the Arlington Renegades. I think that's what they are. I don't think they're Dallas anymore. So that's going to be a big matchup. These two teams don't like each other very much. Throw the record books out. My DC defenders in the national championship game for the XFL. Pretty pumped about that. I'm looking at it right now. Oh, yeah. Excited. Excited for you, PFT. Uh, XFL. <laughs> Same, that was the excited. XFL minute. Um, I'm looking right now. The, the, the Chiefs actually have a loaded schedule to choose from. It could be Chiefs Bills or Chiefs Bengals. So they play, uh, Chief, they play the Eagles, the Bengals, and the Bills at home. So could be any of those three games. I so if it has to be, that. if if it's not going to be the Chiefs, is there any chance that it could be Bills Bengals, the prayers for tomorrow game? I think it has to be Chiefs. They don't right? play the Cowboys, by the way. The Chiefs do not play the Cowboys. I thought they did. I thought no, that the, they do not. They're playing the NFC North, and my the mistake. Eagles and the Eagles because it's seventeen games. So that's the only other NFC team they're playing. So we'll see. I think it's I think it's gonna be probably Bills, right? I would guess Bills Chiefs or Eagles. Bills would be electric. Yeah, because yeah. the Eagles have all the hype now from the off season. Yeah, that's true. Hopefully, the field is uh, in good shape so Max can't cry about it again. Well, well, obviously they, they wouldn't be playing in Phoenix. So no, but they would be playing in Kansas City, and the sod father might come back just to fuck over the Eagles one more time. Maybe. <laughs> now you're thinking about it, right? Now you're thinking. I'm just about thinking it. about tomorrow night. Okay, tonight. Tonight. Um, all right, my who's back? Uh, it was also going to be Billy's video with the uh, Travis Kelsey. So I'll just say my who's back is me being old because I missed the Jay Z lyrics. So uh, yeah, if those, uh, I'm probably going to get a shitload of tweets about that. That's fine. I am an old guy, 38. Okay. PFT, have you had the? I didn't we recognize could... it was a Jay Z lyric right away. I I just could tell from the way he wrote it that he wasn't original enough. To... Yeah. Yeah. I'll Think just of that himself, up. so I, I knew it was a lyric. I like Jay-Z. I don't know his lyrics by uh, heart. Uh, PFT, though, I I want to say something scary. that I just throw it out there. Um, we're both, like, about to be 38 and a half. I feel like we are now have to start looking at what's coming up. Fuck. Yeah. For, what? 40. 40? We're, yeah. We're, we're, we're rounding the corner. Like, yeah. uh, I didn't think I'd start thinking about it until I turned 39, but I started thinking about it this past weekend, and I was like, Fuck, man. Fuck. You know what happens when you're 40? Yeah, you get your you get the yeah, you get the butt appointment. But I think they have I think that my thought all along I've been thinking about this since I was like 20 years old that technology will get to a point where we don't have to do that. I'm pretty sure they can do that exam now with like a laser. Chat GPT needs to figure out how to look inside my butthole. Yeah, you have a year and a half, robots. Please, please, please come up with something. You should probably get it earlier. PFT, if they can't come up with something, maybe we just do the exam at the same time with the same doctor. With each other. Then it won't be sus. Yeah, if we hold hands while we do it. Yeah. (laughs) If you have a buddy. We'll do it for PMTV. 
Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it on YouTube. We might even make a trip out of it, like guys trip. <laughs> it's perfect. We're going to do it. We'll do it the same. Maybe we won't do it in the same room. We'll do it the same day. That's a promise to the listeners. Our yep. big 40 yep. bash. Uh, okay, Billy. My who's back is classical music. Oh. Might not sound like the most uh, sexy thing, but apparently uh, at the L.A. Philharmonic, a woman had an orgasm in the middle of Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony. Okay. Yeah, mm. but it's on, like, apparently all these, like, uh, orchestra nerds start tweeting about it, like, and they have it on. It's funny. Yeah, they have it's it on funny. audio file. It's actually really funny. I don't know how that happened how did scientifically. It... Just redescribe the sound. It was a uh, full body. Yeah, do it. Show us. Here, I can play do it. A re- no, no, no. Do a remix. Do I, a I remix. No, do a Billy no, football I wanna, remix. I, 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 I can't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Like, yeah. I don't know how that happens. Apparently, it was uh, very moving. Yeah. Music. It's the G-string yeah, vibration. Hitting that high note. Oh, yeah. I forgot one other thing for my who's back. The uh, the games in Mexico this weekend fucking ruled. I went for a legacy bet today. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, PFT, but the Giants and Padres played in Mexico City, which is 2,000 feet higher than Denver. Uh, and on Saturday, it was like a softball game. There were 11 home runs. It was 16 to 11 was the final score. I The over-under was 20 and a half today. I was like, let's do it. They didn't even come close. But they should play... Every team should have to play like a series in Mexico City because it was awesome. Yeah. And then we we bet uh, the Mexico over. Yeah, every, every single, every single one of those. It, I like the sombreros that they brought out. Yep. Um, the Padres uniforms were sick. So sick. I love those, like the the neon colors. Yeah, the city yeah, connects. Mexico City sneaky high. Yes, very high. All right, Jake, finish us off. Uh, my who's back is dodgeball. Oh, they're making a sequel with Vince Vaughn. Oh, so I feel like okay. That's a- it's a great movie right, that everyone yeah. who listens to this is seeing, and it's exciting. Yeah, caught my so, eye. It's tough though, to... like Anchorman two, disappointment. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it could flop, but like the excitement of it happening, we're all gonna watch it. Yeah, and if Anchorman two was a big just, letdown. Just it's Wayne's, listen to Wayne, Trey Wingo's podcast in ten years. Yeah, Wayne's World two was the original letdown of those type of movies because they're just so good. Yeah, they're, but I think having the original like, that's cast a, that's is a, huge. that is a perfect movie. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. All right, Jake. I'll get into it. I'll go watch yeah, it with we'll you. Watch it. Yeah. 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 Maybe we'll do in the new office. We'll do a little dodgeball. Make a dodgeball week. Yeah. Whoever's oh, making this movie, do a fucking ad deal with us. Yeah. That is perfect. We will play dodgeball. Twentieth Century Studios. That would actually be awesome if we played dodgeball, but like the game was live for the entire week. So you could just peg people in the fucking face. <laughs> also, all it's week interesting because in the movie, headshots are legal. <laughs> yeah. No, headshots yeah. should always be legal. If you're playing with, if, as long as you're yeah. not playing with like hard balls, like you should absolutely have headshots being legal. Especially if people are ducking and stuff. They play cheap and they like put their head into it. That always sucks. It's also, the like, balls aren't headshots. fucking soccer balls. They're, were, they're soft. No, yeah. were you guys playing in the rubber ball era or yeah. the yeah. foam ball latex. era? Latex. Yeah. We didn't give yeah. a fuck about latex allergies. Dude, I Don't hate play. It. That and, and kickball when they're like no head hunting. No, fuck yes, there's head hunting. That's the whole yeah. point. The balls are, they're I, bouncy balls. Yeah. Go right for I the got head. to my first fight on the on the kickball field because I threw at a guy and he ducked and then he came over to me and pushed me and then I, I got into like a fight in fourth grade and nice. I had to be broken up in nice. school suspension. But it was his fault. You can't duck a headshot. You can't duck a body shot and turn it into a headshot and then expect vengeance for it. It doesn't yeah. work like that. That's that's like targeting when they slow it down. It's like, well, the guy had nowhere to go. I was going full speed out there. It's really easy to see with the benefit of instant replay. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Should we get to busting with the boys in studio? Uh, PFT, you got a couple ads, and then we will get to busting the boys in studio. Yeah, before we get to busting with the boys, they're brought to you by our great friends at Chevy. You know we're truck guys through and through, and Chevy Silverado has been a partner with unstoppable grit and determination. It's been our most valuable truck, our MVT. And now the first ever all-electric Silverado joins the franchise. We got the chance to see this thing and experience it, and it is a game changer. It's available in 400 mile range and GM estimated on a full charge over 10 feet of length in the bed. They've got the multi-flex tailgate combined with the multi-flex mid gate, large 17 inch diagonal display screen. It can tow up to 10,000 pounds of max towing zero to 60 in under 4.5 seconds 
with wow mode and an up to an impressive 785 foot pounds of torque. Go to Chevy.com, learn more. This truck is amazing. It's the best truck that I've ever seen. It turns heads. It's the best truck on the road. Chevy's the best car company on the road. Go over to Chevy.com, learn more, or go check out the truck for yourself at a dealership. And now, here's Buster the Boys. Okay, we now welcome on very special guests, good friends of ours, colleagues. It is Will Compton and Taylor Luan, busting with the boys in studio. Hello, boys. What are you gonna do? You gonna clap? Yeah. Yeah. Clap yeah. it up. Clap it up for yourself. Clap it up for yourself. Uh, okay. <laughs> so we're taping this hours before the NFL draft. Hours. Uh, we're gonna run this on Monday. Let's start though, Taylor. I want to hear. Well, Will as well. Your draft memories. Uh, you got picked. What was eleventh? The eleventh. Eleventh overall. Yeah. Uh, we, did you go to the draft? Yes, I was in uh, Radio City. Okay, so talk us through that night because we, we were talking to Carson Palmer the other day and he actually, it was like 20 years ago, so he signed his contract even before he got drafted, so he already there was no like anticipation right. of what's going to happen. Were you going through the whole gambit of, I have no idea what's going to happen? Like, what did your agent tell you? How When can you go? How late can you go? All that stuff. Uh, they told me like the earliest I could go is two because they were the – the Rams had two picks. They had number two pick and the 13th pick, and they ended up taking Greg Robinson, who's now in prison. Oh, um, win yeah, for Taylor. Win for, so dub for me. <laughs> but to go back to like my draft um, night, I'd have to go back to the Monday before that Thursday night draft. That Monday, the Atlanta Falcons flew to my house and in, in, in Arizona where I was staying, and they said, hey, if you're there at 6, have your bags packed, be ready. And I'm thinking to myself, I will be there at six. Now, who to... was this? Who who came to your house? Dan Quinn? Uh, no, it wasn't Dan Quinn. It was it was one of the upper dudes that kind of was like the right-hand man of the right-hand man. Okay. But they sent a flight. The guy literally, they had a jet that the came down coach. to my house and came, yeah, and came and saw me. So I thought, this is locked and sealed. And then during the draft week, I was talking to Jake Matthews, and I was like, where do you want to go? And he's kind of like putzing around because he doesn't want to tell me. And eventually he tells me, I want to go to the Falcons. I was like, yo, me too. So six comes around, and uh, the phone starts ringing, and it's two tables down, and it's Jake Matthews, and I was fucking, mm. I was hot, I was hot for that, and I, another reason that happened on the red carpet. But it, oh, for, the, what? for the sake what? of time, what happened on the red carpet? It was Mother's Day. We it was Mother's Day weekend, and so they wanted everybody with their mothers to walk down the red carpet. So my mom um, gets all dressed up. All the other moms are wearing their Sunday dress. My mom is wearing a a, a shirt. With cleavage, all of the cleavage showing. I'm gonna oh, look no. it up real and quick. so I'm wearing. Uh, I might have had a tweet. Yeah, yeah maybe. Okay. But um, <laughs> my, my we do the red carpet. I'm feeling myself. I'm in a nice tan suit. I got the black collar on there. I'm literally this is the best I've ever felt in my entire life as far as looks go. And I get to the green room. I, I pull open the bird, and I I just it's just constant tweets of hey, I want your mom to sit on my face. She I looks fuck good. Her mom. Oh, I'm looking at it right no. now. Yeah. She looks good. She knew what she was doing. She knew exactly what she was she doing. Was she was single off. at the time too. I think newly single. So she was she was ready to find a suitor. But, so I had to deal with that. So that's a little bit of adversity. Six came along, big time adversity. I ended up oh, leaving. She's got the cross in there too. Mm, yeah. yeah. She, knew, she doesn't even go to church. Inside she doesn't there. even go to church. Yeah. So that's. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. If anything, that's that, 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 She was doing her thing. She was, she was, yeah. she was doing her thing. It was her yeah. draft yeah. night too. She was yeah. doing her thing. Resting in between the two thieves there. She gave birth to you. Yeah. It's her night. Yes. And so I ended up getting pick 11 and I was really upset at the time because I thought there's no way I'm going to fucking play, dude. Michael Ruse was there. Michael Orr was there. They just signed Michael Orr to a four-year deal. So I didn't really know what to think. And then obviously things ended up working out. Yeah. So, it's, think, so it's all good. You think that maybe if you had a, a more heartwarming story of high school, like maybe if, you're, if your mom wasn't around and then some family picked you up and kind of nursed you and trained you how to play football, you would have had that all the buzz. Wait, you would have gotten drafted wait. instead of Michael Orr. <laughs> wait, PFT. What? That kind of did happen. That kind of did happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. He did, did actually. Did. I had, lived, lived with a different with an family, family in high school. In high school. Oh. I was. I, I when you started that, I was like, I know he's doing my core. I, 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 I don't think. I don't think. All right, all right, all right yeah. so that's my bad. Hand up. It's all good. It's, 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 that's just hey, hey, journalism. You should have just done your homework. But and since he's wearing the shades, I couldn't tell. Like, no, I knew. I knew right away. I knew that he didn't know. But follow up, Taylor. Why didn't Disney make a movie out of you? It's a good question. That is a good question. White. There's enough. Whoa. There's enough movies with white. I was you thinking it. Will just said Will Compton there who said that. Will Compton. Will Compton said that. Will Compton. We're like Will Bel Air. Billy. Billy. You saw Billy was shaking his head like absolutely yeah. as soon as he answered yes, the question. So. Yes. But that, I mean, so after you get drafted, do you just go straight to a party? Yeah, I went to my hotel room. Uh, 
handful of people there, a lot of alcohol consumed. What else? A lot of extracurriculars <laughs> consumed. And the next day I was on a Southwest you were doing flight. doing HGH that early? Yeah, oh, that's funny. <laughs> and then I was like C-35 on a Southwest flight from like LaGuardia to mm. BNA. They didn't put you on the... No. Damn. Titans weren't rocking with that, those kinds of funds just yeah. yet. Amy Adams didn't really take over the franchise just yet. It was a, a dead franchise at the time, to say the least. Yeah. Can, can I just say something, though? Go ahead. Uh, I'm looking at the draft order here. The Falcons fucked up. They should have taken you. Thank you. You can yeah. always say that. I'm looking at who was drafted around you. I'm going through the top ten. Clowney. I would. That's like a toss up to me. You were Clowney, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, Greg Robinson. I take you over him. As you mentioned, he's in Jail. prison. Uh, Blake Bortles. That was the correct Steel. pick for the Jaguars. Steel. Yeah. Absolutely fleeced. They Steel. fleeced the entire draft. Blake has the, one of the best interviews of all time with that woman. She's like, "What would you be doing she if has you a name. weren't?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sophie Julius. Yeah. Sophie. Yeah. Her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, him saying he would like. Wakes up in the morning, takes a piss, or he'd be doing construction and smoking cigarettes. And he's 100% serious. He's a I, legend. He, Dude, he retired on our show like six months ago yeah. because he had just forgotten to tell everyone that he retired. I remember Like, we that. had him on, and we were just like, what are you up to? He's like, yeah, so I guess technically I did retire, and he just didn't tell anyone. Really? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Just on, I think that's what the move, I think that's what a lot of people are doing is like kind of just like sitting there, and they're going to be like 15 years down the road and be like, ah, I'm done. Yeah, and he said, he was like, yeah, a bunch of teams reached out during training camp, and he just, he told his agent like, no, I think I'm retired. And he just retired. Just never signed the papers. <laughs> no, he signed the papers, he just didn't tell anyone. That's so funny. Yeah. yeah. That's it's, so funny. That's it's a, perfect. Yeah. You, you had an overall pretty good draft night. I'd say going first round, you're happy, your mom gets some camera time, that's awesome. Will, what was your draft night like? I have to assume pretty glamorous, had, had some folks over. <laughs> yeah, it went about like anybody else sitting at home watching the draft. Uh, you see about 300 people get picked, and then you wonder if the phone rings. But mine's like a casual person watching the draft. Like, you know, nothing's probably going to happen. You're hopeful. Yeah, yeah. wait. So You're hopeful in day three. Did you think? Yeah. At, at, the, at the time, I was going into it, and on NFL Draft Scout, I think I was, I believe I was a fifth round pick to PFA, preferred free agent. Okay. So you're hopeful that, like, you know, you're going to get picked up in the fifth, sixth round. Once it gets to the seventh, you know, everybody, is, there's like a consensus out there that you'd rather be undrafted than go seventh round because seventh round is essentially an undrafted cat and you don't get to pick your destination. Yeah. Right. Um, and mine, I, I want to say mine was out of Chicago, Washington, and Tampa. But I then my agent just calls me and says, you're going to be a Washington Redskin. Like there wasn't, I didn't really feel like I had the, I got the pick. He's like, hey, these are the teams that are interested. I was like, I mean, those would be sick. I'm kind of thinking about playing with Levante. Like, man, if I was like in the same locker room as Levante, that would right. be sick. Right. And, and then he, yeah, and then he calls and he's like, oh, you're gonna be a Washington Redskin. I was like, fuck, where is Washington? Yes. I was like, oh, it's yeah. in D.C., it's not like, the state of Washington. It's the capital of the like, Marshawn yeah. Lynch. Yeah. Marshawn Lynch thought he was going to New York City when he went to <laughs> Buffalo. Um, all right. So, no, honest question, Will, because obviously you didn't get drafted, but was there a moment that? Uh, you thought like, all right, this is me. Like, it's coming up right now. Like, yeah. fifth round, sixth round. Because yeah. that's got to – that has to suck. Did you have a party? You didn't have a party, Well, right? I, it like – and where I'm from, you're always having like – our family's always having like a barbecue, a get-together. Right. So there's, there was people over – there was people over. You, we can call it a party. There was a number of people there. Multiple people were sitting, grilling. My old man's grilling. We're kind of watching it in one of my boys' basements. He's and, in his uh, Air Monarchs. Your dad's yeah, a legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is a legend. He was probably rocking. I think he's like a New Balance or Velcro. Sometimes he hits the Velcro shoes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, there were a few times. Literally day one, the Chargers called me. What? That's day, like a prank? One, <laughs> no, that's a prank. They called me and they're like, hey, you know, I don't fucking remember what they said. I was just like, I couldn't believe that I was getting some phone call on day one. I was like, hang on, no, that's a different area code right here. Yeah. Like, hey, what's up? It's Will. You got the you got the right number. And they, they talked about, like, liking me. I don't think for the high rounds. I think a lot of teams, they start doing their recruiting early. Right. But uh, they, uh, like, the first pick in the second round was Chargers. They ended up getting Manti Teo. Okay. okay. So then that one kind of goes off. And then there's... You know, you see, like, uh, you start seeing guys that you feel like you're in the crowd better with than, get yeah. picked up. Yeah, and guys that you think you're better than go in, like, the seventh round. You're like, fuck me, man. Like, maybe I'm not yeah. who I think I am. But, uh, so, yeah, there was definitely bitterness Do when you? you're when the, the draft ends and you're like, well, fuck, I guess. Imposter syndrome now? is a real thing in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah, you really believe that. Didn't, uh, well, we were talking about this in the bus the other day, is, like, when you're getting drafted, if you're in those later rounds, like that seventh round, you'd almost rather be a free agent because right. you can kind of pick best case, like best right. situation for yourself. So, Will, did you? Um, was there any moment when you're sitting there with everyone? Was there any person in your like draft part party with quotation marks that was like kept on like being like, "Are you gonna get it? Are you gonna get it?" Because I always think like 
those moments where it's like, get out of here. Like, you're second cousin. No, get think, the fuck yeah, out I of here. Yeah, I think my uncle, my uncle Chris, <laughs> he would just fucking ask, hey, you know, who's that from? Who's that text from? <laughs> and he's just I like, yo, shut the nuts. fuck up, man. Yeah. I, I want to get drafted too, trust me. Yeah. I want to see my name run down on the ticket. Very that's badly. Like, that's like the, yeah. You like you want it more than anything, and then when it doesn't happen, you're like motherfucker. Bro. Are you on the phone with with the Chargers, and are people at the party at the cookout looking over at you? Like, <laughs> no, no, call? no. This is the, the since day three's on Saturday. Like to get together, like nobody was over at the house on Thursday. I'm literally just watching. I think I made a couple vines that day. Like fucking, <laughs> it's a good day. Yeah, yeah. I Solid made a couple day. vines. Like I'm watching the first round, like everybody else, seeing yeah. who goes. Like I, that was the draft. I think Alec Ogletree with it was in. You're hoping backers go in the first round, so uh -huh. that way you're like fucking moving up the list, right? Yeah. Um, so there was no there was no party on day one or day two. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's rip the bandaid off. Tough question. Um, <laughs> if the Big Ten championship game goes different, do you think you get drafted? I don't know, man. Because that you know, was you, that year. You know what I think goes different for me on getting drafted? I think if we didn't run, because Coach Bo, we, we we essentially ran the same call every time as even double bracket. Very much a, uh, a man-oriented defense. I think if we spot dropped more, because I learned that I was solid at that when right. I got in the NFL. I feel like if I was in a system where I was spot dropping a little bit more versus trying to cover some of these motherfuckers one-on-one, -on -one, right. maybe, but who knows? If, but if I play that game, I think like I don't learn – Offense, defensive terminology, schematics, the way I did learning under Bo Pelini. Right. I feel like he's a mastermind at that stuff. Yeah. We've talked to Will before about like the moment that he realized that coming in as an undrafted free agent, like I can actually do this. I, I feel like I can fit in. I can hold my own. Taylor, on your side, was there ever a moment, speaking of like imposter syndrome, where you, you come in, first round pick, highly touted, and you start to get to work and you have like a little bit of doubt, like, oh shit, this is way harder than I thought it would be. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if it was like anything like way harder than I thought it'd be, but the imposter syndrome of like coming in, like I legit thought my first training camp, I might get cut and I had to like go which talk is crazy, to, which is wild. Cause yeah. like, as a first round pick, like you'd have to do so many bad things to get cut. Yeah, right. And I would talk to Michael Ruse and I'd be like, dude, what do you think? Like, you think I'm going to make the, the team or what? And he'd like laugh in my face. And so, and then even when you are playing, you're kind of always in this situation where you're like, when are people going to find out that I'm actually not as good that's right. people think uh -huh. I am. And so you're all it, it's a it's a constant mental battle that you're always dealing with. There wasn't like one specific I guess like the time I figured out I could play was my first start against the Jags. Yeah. It was one of our two wins that year. So so when all these guys get drafted and they go to the facility and then they're starting OTAs, how quickly on the other side? You guys obviously were in locker rooms for many years. Uh what, eleven, Will? Yeah, I think we're going up what am I? You're on year eleven? Ten point two. Ten point two. Eleven. 12. Uh nine for you? Yes. So Will did actually beat you. Yes. Okay. Uh, if we're talking technical terms. Well, yes. so you are yes. retired. Exactly. Huh? So you're retired. As of right now, he's beating me. Okay. All right. Got it. That was close. That was we close almost one. let one loose. Thank there. Yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate uh, you catching yeah, that. No, no, I yeah. got you. Uh, that was Taylor's huge. still fielding calls. We don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, we don't know. Um. Okay. Tonight. So, so yeah, tonight you might get called. Yeah. We're going to redraft you. <laughs> That'd be outstanding. <laughs> Could you get redrafted if you were like, if you were super old, didn't have a contract? How does that work? Could no, you get drafted if you were never drafted? Like, could I still yeah. get drafted? Oh, that yeah. would be That's sick. That's a good fucking question. But, well, my question was, so these guys all get in the facility. They start OTAs and everything. How quickly from the other side, when you guys were already established in the NFL, how quickly could you tell the guy we just drafted is real or the guy we just drafted, that was like, we fucked up? I think it depends. It depends on the position. Yeah. Right? Well, so tell me which positions. This offensive is line, offensive line, defensive line. I linebacker, you're kind of you're kind of waiting for pads to come on because you can do anything in underwear. Like guys are at, yeah. during OTAs, dudes are in shorts and shirts, like yeah. doing drills. But as soon as pads come on, you could tell almost in instantly. the first three four days you're gonna figure yeah. out who's gonna be. That's who. awesome. Will then, looks and, way better outside of underwear. Yeah. Right? Well. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. I would say Will. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not wait, wait, wearing. Will's always, yeah. Will has yeah. always yeah. been a neck up guy. When yes. Will's wearing anything Dude. except for underwear, Ankle, he looks we, way better. So what we say about Will's ankles down, neck up. Ankles down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's funny you say that, uh, PFT, because the year that the catch happened when we got – I think it was 2014. So I think I started like five games. That off season, I go in for the exit for the exit meeting, and uh, my coach, Coach KO, Kirk Olivadotti, he's the linebacker coach for the Packers right now. But he was like, 
you know, you have what it takes to be a starter in this league. And he's like, look, at the end of the day, you're going to win this job, and I fully expect you to win this job next year in training camp. Not in OTAs. You don't look pretty or you don't move <laughs> like everybody else. You're not the prettiest player in shorts and everything like that. But when we get the pads on, I fully expect you to win this job next year, and you're going to have every opportunity to do it. But uh, don't be surprised if we end up drafting somebody. Oh, <laughs> that's, but, but that's a good heads up. I mean, it's like, so fucking strong, yeah. dude. He should have switched I, it. He should have switched it where he's like, hey, we'll probably draft somebody and then yeah, well, you're going to beat this guy. Yeah. Just yeah. to not go in on him just being like, oh, and we're probably still going to draft somebody. Uh, it was more, I think I was asking. He's like, you never know. We probably could draft somebody. But, you know, he's basically saying you have every opportunity to win, but it's not going to be in shorts. It's not going to be during yeah. OTAs next and season. And I mm-hmm. always trust people more when they tell me bad news because they're being honest with me. They're yeah. not just telling me whatever it is I want to hear. So when coaches are like very matter of fact, if they say something shitty about you, but also have something that says like, I fully expect that you're going to win this job next year. Then you know that they're being honest, and right. you know that you can like plan accordingly. So, right. I, so like the the fact that you can figure out someone is a guy right away, almost right with pads. Do you think that teams should maybe like have some of their best players look at guys like in in the meetings and stuff when they bring them in and have it, like? Did you ever get leaned on for talk about like draft? Yeah, like draft, draft visits. Not all the way to Russell Wilson, who said that he watched every piece of tape for every quarterback ever <laughs> in like two hours. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's just, it always fascinated me because there's guys, you're doing it, and you're doing it at a high level. Do you think there's any part of the guys who are making decisions who want to be like, hey, can you just take a look at this guy? Like, let me know what you think. Will you that ever happen? I don't think I was ever in that position of drafting. Or like Do you think that should like happen is a better question. I, I, don't, think, the I don't think vets yeah. care unless they're yeah. like the quarterback. Like, hey, Peyton Manning, like, come in here. What do you think yeah. of this guy? Yeah, I, yeah. There's been a handful of guys that I've known of that have had that opportunity to go sit in and be like, what do you think of this guy? Yeah. I've gotten texts from coaches being like, you know this person, yes or no. And if it's a yes, then they ask about the individual. Right. But I've never been asked to sit and watch <laughs> film with somebody. It's, okay. Do you think I, it would work or no? It depends on the individual. Yeah. A guy like Ben Jones, the center for the Titans for the last seven years, that's a guy that could easily go and do that right and now. And can like watch tape and be like, yep, that guy can help yeah. us. He's got good Ben, he does this, blah, 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 teachable skills. Yeah, because I guess what it really comes down to is a lot of guys who are playing right now in the NFL will end up being scouts, fr- right. you know, front office yeah. guys. Why not take advantage of that right now? Because maybe the player doesn't care to give their honest opinion. Because what if it's a position of that's theirs? true? That's, that's true. One. Or that's they have true. a friend that plays that position. Yeah, right. and they're trying. Yeah. To I think it happens more with like veterans and free agency. Like, hey, if a coach is like, hey, I saw yeah. you on this team with him. What's he like in the locker room? Stuff yeah. like that. Right. Yeah. That but makes never sense. Like a, never like a film thing. That makes sense. Uh, like, hey, Will, what do you think of this linebacker? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think he's got a step on me or anything like I'm that. I'm just like a more more <laughs> brain power, dumb. but more brain yeah. power. You know, like just get as many. You know, I guess that would probably also hurt you because you're in the war room and you have like 70 opinions on one right. guy probably paralysis by analysis right. i think being in the war room would be one of the coolest things to experience yeah i, I want to be like, in a war room i don't a, care which oh. one it is just to be yeah, like yeah. i'm in the war room I yeah know. i would talk to john robinson jokes. about that all the time like yeah. every draft i'd be like john can i just like sit in there for yeah. the first round and he just cleanly tell me no yeah but i would want to so bad i think i would i think i'd probably make a joke too early in the draft when yeah. it's still tense and then that would probably you would definitely like the guy they wanted with the pick before and you would be like didn't we want him yeah like, like oh wanna? shit isn't that the guy we wanted yeah and see didn't we mouth. want justin jefferson yeah fuck Damn. Or, or they'd be call- yeah they'd be calling the guy on the phone and big cat would just be like sorry yeah we, we were going to get the guy but he got picked before you but yeah, we're really yeah. excited about you yeah well you're fine yeah second choices work out or sometimes. just rat out the like the oc the offensive coordinator like hey coach you, i thought you liked that guy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 he you didn't just, want you, you but just, i did you're yeah. just telling me you wanted him over him yeah yeah like did you tell me you didn't want this guy <laughs> yeah. that he sucked well just, did it ever get confusing in, in film study or anything when somebody would talk about linebackers and they'd say like here's the will and you'd be like wait is that me that they're talking about one of them just jokes it's like it went fresh or the very beginning of the year, like, oh, yeah, hey, Will, you're going to play the mic, but just don't listen to me when I say Will. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that probably, that for your way. brain, that would be confusing. <laughs> yeah. well, would it not? Like, like hey, uh, Will, Will hey, we're neck just up guy. He's you, a neck up guy. I'm just going to call you Comp. <laughs> yeah, Comp. That's a good nickname. Yeah. But Taylor, you end up Comp going nasty. to Tennessee, no state income tax. That's that's kind of nice. Yeah, it's a dub you don't realize you're getting. Yeah. At the time. Like me being a general studies major, I never really thought about finances <laughs> or anything like that. I just thought, oh, bags are coming my way. Yeah. And then you start to realize that first tax season, you're like, holy shit, like we we had a huge win here. Yeah. yeah. So, so you get your first paychecks and your your life changes because you're now you're extremely wealthy. Yeah. And you're a young guy. Uh, did you have like a finance dude ready to go, or were you just like just yeah? I was ready to deposit. Rip. Into I was the... I was ready to rip right away. I, I got all that stuff taken care of before. Did you buy anything cool? 
I bought a Vans backpack. It had a bunch of quail on it. It was like on sale for like twelve ninety nine. I remember that being my first purchase. Like, it, you my went, bank you account, went dummy on East Bay. On yeah, I went crazy. <laughs> but I was like, I remember having. We were, I was in camp. I signed two days before camp, and like it takes like three weeks or so for like everything to hit. And my bank account, my Bank of America bank account, had twelve dollars and fifty cents in it. And I would check it after every single practice. And then one day, Ken Wisenhunt takes us to the movie theater. Like instead of practice that day, spoiler, we actually ended up practicing that afternoon. <laughs> but like, I remember going to the movie, hot dogs, not, I'm eating crazy. And I get back on the bus to go back and like all of a sudden the things look like a phone number. And I was oh. like, there was like a guy next to me who like legit was like, like because I got drafted was probably going to get cut. Like one of those tackles. He actually wore 77. They just took it from him and gave it to me. Oh, and I was like, bro, check this out. Oh, no. like, I was just Taylor. hype. I was just hype about the situation. Taylor. I was so excited. Damn. Never seen that. Never even didn't know that kind of shit existed. And then all of a sudden it was there. Yeah. It was fucking wild. Well, I bro. bet you had a moment, like not obviously first round money, but like you had a moment where you signed something. You're like, okay, this is way better than I ever expected. Yeah, I mean, it's this is gonna, I guess, sound dumb, but I, but also like my first practice squad check was twelve thousand five hundred dollars. That's pretty sick. And I was like, yo, uh-huh. <laughs> this is not a bad life. Yeah, That's one bad. van's yeah. backpack. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. No, 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 no. It's a lot of van's yeah, backpacks. Yeah. <laughs> Like, a my lot. first big purchase, I was driving a, uh, it was always funny, the boys always chirped me for it, but I would drive this little Hyundai Sonata, and then, like, Trent Williams always had, like, the fucking... He had that shit. He had just a fleet of different vehicles he'd drive in. That's like, he uses, like, uh, cars like shoes, like, yeah. every day, it's yeah, a different yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matches outfit rule. type stuff? Yeah. Oh, God, that's so cool. <laughs> that would be so awesome. Didn't you get body bags for, like, the suits you were wearing, because you went to, like... My first Joseph time, A. Bank got like buy one. Yeah, so at, at the end of my uh, P squad year, I got active for one game, the final game. So I got to travel, and so you know your boy Wayne coughed something. At, was it uh, Joseph A. Banks? Joseph A. Bank. Yeah, yeah. your boy Wayne coughed something. At Joseph a little a. two Bank. for one. <laughs> if you that. haven't gotten to Joseph A. Banks and like you haven't been, you know, that, that when you get the first Joseph A. Banks, you're like you get two suits for five hundred dollars. Yeah, That's sick. Me, and a tie. Yeah, <laughs> and another rookie. I went with another rookie. We went shop because we were both active for that game. We're like, let's go buy something. We went to Joseph A. Bank, and right when we walked on the flight, man, like, hey, look at these two boys. They look like two mannequins right out of the door. Like, <laughs> you guys just say, hey, we want that one to put it on us? That is the problem with Joseph A. Bank is you buy it, and then everyone who's got a really, really nice suit, yeah, they, custom suit, they know. Yeah, they know like, you're wearing you Joseph, Joseph A. Bank. Bank. Mm-hmm. That's a Joseph A. Bank. I was Bank like, damn, joint. is it really like that? I thought <laughs> I was looking so nice. Funny, <laughs> Yeah. Did they let you keep your jersey after that game? The first game that you were active? It's actually here, yes. Oh, oh it really? is here. In this office. Yeah, it's not in this office, but in my uh in my bag out there for you to for the for the Washington pick. Oh, but nice. yeah, number fifty three. That's that was awesome. my Beautiful. number fifty three was my first game worn jersey. Because I've heard that they, they charge you for it sometimes if you give it away. Every they do. I found the fifty three one two years ago, this uh uh press uh, Preston. He's this guy who collects jerseys, big Tennessee Titans fan, but he found mine on that. There's like some, you know, black market out there where you can just buy all these different game jerseys. And he had mine, 53, and he's like, hey, I got this. Would you want it? Yeah. And I was like, bro, that'd be awesome. He's like, can I get one of your Titans jerseys? (laughs) I was like, yeah, I can do that. I would love to just have my jersey, but yeah, I'll trade you. But that's how I ended up getting it. But it is here. Can you power rank the jerseys that you look the the sweetest in? Like when you look at yourself before the game, do a little thirst trap. Yeah. What is Will Compton oh, look? Dude. It's got Raiders. Raiders. It's got Raiders. Raiders. Raiders is number one. For Raiders. Sure. Raiders yeah. fifty one. Raiders fifty seven. <laughs> then I think Raiders it's practice squad. <laughs> I think it's Titans all Navy. Yeah, I mean, Titans Navy, and I would say fifty one and fifty three. <laughs> yeah, I'd say I'd say Washington the Redskins were last. I always kind of hated our 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 uniforms. Yeah. The mustard pants. I was never a fan of them because we'd always have like the. The wrap around stripes. Mm-hmm. I never really liked that. And I don't think I was with it. Like, I don't think I was with, like, you know, swagging out and stuff before games. I was just always so tunnel vision, like, man, I hope I fucking play good. What about yeah. what about uh, Falcons for that uh, tryout? You look good on that. Yeah, Except for the couple the, balls you dropped. The hard part. You did drop the, a couple I balls. I dropped one ball. And I, I saw it. No, it's did one. Did they loop it back? N- yeah, he looped it. That's a loop. That was so. Ar- Arthur That's Smith so, texting bro. me and PFT a video of Will Compton <laughs> hey, dropping it, a ball in, guys, in a tryout. It's guys, so guys, <laughs> guys, is Arthur not a boy or he's what? The best. He's, he's a boy. Yeah. He's the best. Legit. Yeah. We're yeah. in this. We can talk about it. We're in this group chat. It's me, PFT, Big Cat, and Arthur. 
Arthur texted me one morning because you guys were chirping him about his chin. This was two years ago, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's well, like, hey, I mean, we were let's we were let, let's, doing let's him a favor. It. Yeah, we were helping out a friend. You know how I told by you telling him his chin is you know how awful. I, I talked to you about like being <laughs> honest with people. Yeah. yeah. We were just being honest. With yeah. Coach. That's like all. we well, were we were making sure that like get ahead of the story. Art like. The chin's a problem. We got to <laughs> fix this fast. Yeah, yeah. And he yeah. looks good now, doesn't yeah, he? Looks he looks great. He yeah. looks great. And he texts me. He goes, hey, put me in a group chat with PFT and Big Cat. And I just put, laugh out loud, okay, put us all in a group <laughs> chat. We've had this group chat for the last couple of years now. And the whole, I feel like the entire thought of the tryout came from the group yes, chat. Yes, it did. Because we were did. trying to tell him how to beat the Rams. Yeah. And it was like, uh, hey, have somebody get – got to get Aaron Donald suspended, have him rip somebody's helmet off and beat him with it. <laughs> yeah. And Aaron Donald get thrown out of the Will game. Will it fullback? Yeah, yeah. and BFD yeah. was like, yeah. seems like a job for fullback Willie. And yeah. Art's like, would you do that? I was like, yeah. He's like, could you do a workout right now? Like, are you in shape? And I was like, nothing that caffeine and Toradol couldn't get me through. And then that next week is when they called. They're like, so funny, bring me dude. in for a tryout. Yeah. How funny is that? Yeah. He's the best. He's, he's a great dude. And I, his chin has gotten so much better. Yeah. It, it has. You it guys did bad. him a massive favor doing We that. did, oh, right. Yeah. Exactly. Like, we, because, you know, like – you're the head coach of an NFL team. Probably a lot of guys in the facility who won't say, hey, man, your chin looks like, you know, melted cream cheese. We will. Yeah. And then you fix it. That's just being a good friend. That's a good That's friend. That's a good friend. That's See, a solid friend. The ones that'll tell you something's in your teeth, you had a booger in your nose. I think hey, we told them. Your I think, chin looks like I, melted cream I, cheese. Yeah, I think our first, we were like, Arthur, just just become a like a uh, COVID mask guy just forever. Yeah. <laughs> just be like yeah. the last guy super, with the mask on. Super lib, yeah. yeah. Super lib. What if you said something like that to, to Vrabes? Do you think Vrabes would laugh it off? Or do you think Vrabes would actually like punch you? No, Something yeah, like what? You got a cream something... cheese trend? Yeah. yeah. Well, he doesn't. He well, so don't say that. Don't Why'd say you say that? that? No, don't say no. That. Vrabes, Mike, that was Will again. Mike has, Mike has a strong chin. However, Mike has gotten comfortable. Oh. From a weight standpoint. Oh. Yeah, you can tell he's eating well. Am I, I mean... You're on your own. Oh, oh no. no, no. That's all right. He fired me. I can say this, dude. <laughs> yeah. He has gotten a little comfortable, dude. You see the vest? It's, it's a, a size bigger every single year. Oh, uh-huh. no. Did, that's he, all? did he talk to you after you got cut? Did he reach out personally? Yeah, well, I sat in his office with yeah. him and ran. And what, and, but you knew it was coming. Yeah, I knew the minute I had to get surgery the second like the second week of the season, like, it's over. Right. Mm-hmm. In my head, I'm like, they probably should have cut me last year. Yeah. You know, Fuck. they made a big mistake. Have you recovered from the, the graphic that Bezos put out? Um, where no, it was the I, Amazon I, I, graphic? You were in a wheelchair, yeah, you were in a yeah. wheelchair. And, and your friend Ben, the center, he had like the cartoon like yeah, wrap around his wrap. head with like a, a big bump and birds flying yeah, around. That head. uh that's something you just can't recover from. But Amazon, I don't know if Jeff Bezos specifically, but Amazon reached out to the Titans like to apologize and wanted my number. And I was like, do not give them my number. I, w- I want to keep wearing this for a while. Yeah. That thing still pops up every single day, dude. Me in that damn wheelchair. That's it's a okay, tough look. though. No, it's but, a bad Photoshop, too. But in, in, in the content world, if you have something that people can just pick on you, that's like a, a win. The worst part was I was with that all of you w. in yeah. that bar in Arizona. I know. And we just saw it. So like, oh. it we saw it live. Yeah, we saw We're it live. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> I thought, oh, shit. I didn't see the wheelchair at first. I was like, oh, I'm on the TV. I look good. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, my phone's blowing up, and I'm just getting bodied on the internet. It's like, I deserve this. <laughs> so what what do you you guys have been uh, at Barcel now for, what, two years? I think we're three? going on three. We're going yeah, three on three. Years. Yeah, three. It was three in February. How's uh, how's the content world working? Are you guys? Is it everything you thought it would crack crack up to be, or is it like what's what are the pitfalls? What have you? I love it. I think yeah. It's, I think it's more. It's is better it, than we thought it would be. Yeah, yeah. It's been a it's been a blast. Have you have you stayed? Uh, I saw you got into it a little bit the other day, Will. With who? With the guy who made the joke about uh, uh, uh doing a podcast on an airplane. You called them podcast. poor, oh, flying with the fellows. Yeah, you called them poor. Yeah. And yeah. A lot of I, was, like, I was actually talking with Taylor about that. I was like, "Yeah, like you know, you, number one, you're not going to hit every joke. No. And there's times where you know you either don't drink coffee in the morning or you just roll out of bed. The you're wrong just on way. the wrong side. The wrong yeah, we all have bad days. Yeah, and you, except when, Taylor, when he you has look no at the content days. world, no it's not usually, you know tasteful to go to go at people when it comes to money yes. especially you're making so much yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Dude, so, will does really well well no you know so, what it is like, will it, it, it honestly you can do it but you have to be that guy all the time like dave does correct it, but dave is that guy right yeah. right 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 like, he, he, has no yeah, he doesn't it. apologize right. for it and he's like i got rich 
right. I'm rich now. Right. Because I usually try to find a fun way to chirp back at people because it's not like he said anything, that person said anything that bad. I just felt like the shot he was taking, like, oh, this white linebacker who comes in, Dylan Redon's like, they're both going to, they're both going to, they're both going to suck and then they can do a podcast together. <laughs> That's like how I read it in my head at the time. Yeah. yeah. yeah I can't believe I caught strays with that. Did you? <laughs> well, they, well, they're both going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tough L to take, dude. Shit. Uh, Taylor, I, I've been meaning to ask you about this because we were watching, I think it was the, the college semifinal game. I want to say it was TCU. TCU, that game? Yeah, TCU versus Michigan. Michigan, yeah. You were on the sidelines for that on ESPN, right? ESPN 2, yeah. ESPN it wasn't 2. The, it wasn't ESPN. Our friend Cole Kubelik was down there. He's the man. We love Cole. Love Cole. And uh, RG3 was with you. We yeah. haven't got a chance to meet RG3. He has an open invite on this podcast. So we hope to have him on soon. Um, but RG3 had to leave at the very start of the second half mm -hmm. because his wife was in labor. And he waited till the cameras came back on to show everybody his phone be like, I got to go. And you guys were like, oh, shit, RG3's wife is in labor. Then she didn't have a baby for like a month after after he left. Yeah. Did he leave you high and dry? Do you think that he was playing hooky? Do you think he left you guys well, you to know, finish think, the game on, on your own? I think privacy is a place for everybody. Maybe he didn't want to let everybody know for the first month about their kid. Oh. Maybe, maybe that was real. Maybe it wasn't, though. Yeah. Maybe he told a group of individuals at halftime that he had to make a Southwest flight because he booked the wrong flight. In the next two hours, and he had to leave thirty minutes into the third quarter. Yeah, maybe he would much rather be in a situation where his wife calls him, and he has to leave. I I, I don't know. I don't know uh -huh. his truth, but I think he should come on this podcast and explain it. He should yeah. discuss. He should yeah. discuss because I think that was also the day where every Southwest Airlines flight got grounded all across the country. He he also did a genius job of like because you guys know fathers like the pregnant wife thing. Like we were sitting here being like. We want to call him out, but mm, yeah. that's a touchy situation. Yeah, like, yeah. I so to we, we like we he, to he totally disarmed us. Yeah, like we can't be like start running around the internet being like, "Show us the baby." Yeah, show us the baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like that's a good good L that you're gonna. That's catch a big right L. Away. Yeah, it's but that's a good awareness for you to know that. Yeah, a yeah. lot of guys yes. wouldn't wouldn't see that. No, yeah. we kept that in the locker room. Yeah, yeah. there's that's certain good. there's certain takes you have to keep in the locker room and not put out there for the public? Do you guys have anything that, like any takes you guys have been privately discussing? Any of those takes would probably stay private in the locker room. Too hot, too hot yeah. for the air? Well, you were telling me one earlier, right, Taylor? What was that? Uh, you were saying the thing about uh, players in the NFL and drug use. <laughs> no. Oh, you weren't? Okay, never no, mind. No, I wasn't saying oh, anything. Never mind. I must you said something about uh, who's that white quarterback that you weren't a huge fan of in the draft? No. You said you didn't uh, like oh, him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That Will was, Le no, that Kentucky, was, uh, Jacob I know Hainer. for sure it was Kentucky. Hainer from Fresno State, but which I, I love. You said something about a guy that yeah. you just weren't a big fan no, of. No, I actually said, let's be nice to Will Levis because he's a huge stoolie. Okay, that's what yeah, you said. Yeah. And you, you said, said, I don't give a fuck. Nope, didn't say that. I was that. like, I don't you, care about anything. I said, I don't, I said, I don't said trust that. You're him. Like, I, I said, I do fuck not trust him. You said, what did, that, what did Michael me, Rapport say? He doesn't give a fuck about Stoolies? Yeah. I feel the same way. That's what you said. No, that's not what I said. <laughs> what, no, what, what I said was. <laughs> you said Stoolies, where I come from, that means that you're a snitch. you eat the banana peel and you put mayonnaise in your coffee, you just can't be a trustworthy individual. No, okay. And I hope the Titans don't take it. All right, so so this is where there's a disconnect here, because I think Will Levis is already in the content game. Yeah. He's good at it. Like, that's. That's something I, I'm seeing Will Levis, and I'm drafting him not only for his quarterback play, but for his future ability as a podcaster. That's a that's a big. Ball now is the team going to get a percentage, a cut of that po those that podcast revenue? You could mm. if he started the podcast while he was playing for the team, and the team helped to put it out. I think that a smart organization would be like, Correct. we're going to yeah. take some of the ads, and then you're going to get maybe yeah. that circumvents the cap a little bit if you're just. If he's working for like the team media department, you can pay him more money for his podcast. Yeah, that's a, that's a big brain thought. No, yeah, that like, is a big like, brain man, thought. He's, you know, he's not. He's, if there was a situation, he's not really paying out. Well, you know, we're driving some good revenue over here, so yeah. at least that kind of offset the cost. Yeah. Winning right. off the field, now, like yeah, our yeah, friend yeah. Bruce Allen used to yeah. say. Yeah. I'd like yeah. to take this opportunity to say I've changed my mind completely about Will. Lewis. There we okay, go. Good, I, good. Yeah, now, I think I think he's going to be maybe a hall. He's probably going to be a hall, hall of famer. famer. Yeah, 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 hall of fame person as well. Now, what if we said that he was going to maybe do a podcast at Barstool? sports and take over for uh two other guys that play in the nfl mm. will let me walk you through this will levis is going to be richer than you after tonight uh you can't call him poor what's the next thing we say <laughs> he's actually thinking of something mean to say <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> uh all right, you guys want to talk some big 10 football let's talk big we 10 can football. talk big 10 football let's talk some big 10 football Let's do it. Where you want to start? The, do you think the, Nebraska has any ch Taylor? Yes. Like, this is this I'll, is I'll crazy. Answer these will. Yeah, he, it's right, crazy that he thinks. Talk, then he thinks that, that that Matt Rule is the answer here. 
Yeah. I think here's what I know. Uh, after talking with the people at the upper, the upper, whatever upstairs of Nebraska, mm-hmm. they had two coaching candidates um, that they were massive fans of. And they realized that one was going to be a head and shoulders above the other. And one was Luke fickle. Was it Luke fickle? Yeah, and Luke fickle. Matt rule. And they, yep. they, once they found out the caliber that which guy can get to the, the, the highest of the program, they chose Matt Rule. I, right. I do believe three to five years from now, Nebraska is playing for Big Ten championships. Okay, wow. so Luke Fickle, the guy who's actually been to the college football playoff. And yeah, also Luke Fickle Cincinnati. was hired Dude, that before was, Matt Rule, yeah. so that feels We're talking like... talking about at Cincinnati. That yeah, well, feels no. like... No, Luke yeah, Fickle, exactly. Luke, you guys Luke Fickle was that, told no. I was told, got, he was told no by guys, Nebraska. You guys realize that schedule. going to the college football playoff at Cincinnati is way harder. Yeah, but all you gotta do is win your games. Like it's you have to win schedule. every game. Easy schedule. Easy schedule. Easy Who schedule. else? Did they, they scheduled somebody hard the year that they made it. Yeah, they that far right. They, they beat Notre Dame. Notre Dame's not them. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, they did beat. They Notre lost. Dame. The, what year was this? This was uh, what twenty nineteen? No. Notre Dame's probably the most fla- like fraudulent school. In, if Nebraska in has that schedule, oh, let's, let's talk defeated. about it. Let's talk about Taylor. <laughs> Notre Nebraska Dame three win. and nine that year. Is that was the most... big greatest. That was that was the year that they probably. <laughs> Big Cat. They went three and nine. Yeah, on our schedule. If we're on Cincinnati's schedule, we win that outright. No chance. We're in the college football playoff. Yeah. Well, Taylor, well, let's, let's talk about that. You. Said, I was really hoping that brush over PC. You, you said you said Notre Dame is the most fraudulent school in college football. Twenty. I would say it's close. Why are you looking at me? Notre Dame? I'm just looking for a little help out here. <laughs> no, yeah, that's, yeah. no, that's it's, Texas. It's a bold state. Texas. No, Texas is going to be back, dude. They yeah, got, but they it, got the Manning kid. Notre Dame has, like, They've they've been in the mix every single year. They haven't won the title. Yeah, they need that one difference maker at quarterback. Who do they play every year besides USC? I mean, they 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 Navy. play. They usually play a good out of conference. Like they played Ohio State last year. They Ohio play, State's not that good anymore, dude. They're way past their prime. What? I've been to the facilities. I've seen those players. Oh yeah, I forgot Michigan. Okay. Yeah, I've seen those yeah, players. Yeah, yeah. We'll no, they're they're players. definitely not keeping up with those facilities over there. Yeah. We we they had like a a giant dunk tank basically an isolation chamber that you could go into and just recover at like ten times the normal speed. Who Ohio State? We didn't see that. We were there. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we, we saw didn't that. see. We that. were on the urban. We didn't get. To they see gave all us the, the good tour. Yeah. We we did a tour of Ohio State facilities and uh, we got like halfway through and I was like, "Where's Urban Meyer's uh, contract that he wrote to his family saying like he he cares about them more than football and." Uh, and the, one, the guy giving us a tour like was like, this tour's over. He like didn't talk to us. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, oh, happy. my God. <laughs> what, what actually happened, we were in his office, and, and they're showing us around his office, and he's got the contract yeah, on I his wall. Right. And, then, and then Big Cat goes up to him and goes, hey, guys, this is the contract. Yeah, it's like family. It's a fake and, heart attack and, contract. And he started taking a picture of it. And then I heard one of the guys whisper to the other uh, coach that was giving us the tour, like, they're making fun of coach's contract. <laughs> <laughs> And then and then they reacted like he was a cult leader. Yeah. They're like we need to extricate these these gentlemen <laughs> yeah, yeah, from this. Yeah. He had to make a contract to say that he loves his family, and I was the weird one. Yeah. <laughs> like, I do think there's an argument. I think there's an argument. This is gonna be this is gonna be painful, but I think there's an argument that Michigan is the most fraudulent team in college football. Oh, all right. So off that, Taylor. Yeah. Last year, you go to the the college football playoff for the second year in a row. We yeah, we went to it. Let's remember that we went to it. You went mm-hmm. to it, but it was a failure. Yeah, you yeah, win the national Ooh. championship. Yeah, yeah, it was a failure. It was Michigan, a failure. Michigan, Michigan lost that Giannis. game. Michigan lost that game. TCU did not win that game. Okay, but still, TCU won the game. TCU had a, wait, yeah, wait, had wait, a higher wait, score wait, wait, at the end of the game. Let me see. Wait, and who based on the, won, game, the way the who game had was more being points? Played, TCU. So they did they win but or lose? Yeah, they won. But I'm saying Michigan. This is like our max. Debate. Michigan max has, has says that the Phillies didn't get no hit in the World Series. Michigan has the has better talent and should have won that game. They have better coaches as okay, well. Okay, but who? However, won? there were there were miscues. We had a pick six. There was a uh, quarterback running back exchange well, issue at the goal line yeah, that should have been called a touchdown in the first talk. place. This is after there's talk. an interception. You guys weren't. You guys didn't even sniff that. I'm saying you when you say, when you say we had more talent and we we should have won that game, and but we, we didn't win. Coaches. It, is the loser no, we talk. Didn't win that game. And, and you're right. Win. You're right. We didn't sniff the Big Ten, but we're not saying we're good. Right. Like, we're, that's what we I'm got, saying. There's yeah, an argument for we're the climbing the mountain. It's not we're climbing the mountain. We are, we are a top four program in all of college football sports. Some are saying Michigan's sports. on the other side of the mountain, and they never got to the top. That's yeah. ridiculous to say. We're, that's, we're that's on the climb. Willie and I are on the climb. When did they, you, have, you see, have you seen their recent recruiting class? Okay. They're number one. 
They're over Ohio State. They're over Georgia. So they they're should over win Alabama. all their games, number especially one. against TCU. I'm just saying they're just reloading over and over again. Okay. Here's hey, the they they're number one right now early in the recruiting process. That's okay. all right. Nice. That's Huge. okay. What does that get you if you're number one recruiting? <sighs> a lot of opportunity. Uh, it uh-huh. actually gives you the opportunity when you lose in the college football playoff. To and we have the best. We, we have had more talent. I was going to say better coach. We have the best strength staff. Yeah. We have the best strength yeah. staff. We have the best coaching staff. And these guys, they're going to develop these players. We're going to win national championships in the next three years. It's so huge. PF. And, when, and when Harbaugh leaves, should have been a win. When Harbaugh does that, oh, I'm going to leave. Blah blah blah. And he finally goes in two three years. The, the old line coach, Sharon Moore, he will be the, the head coach of the University of Michigan. He will take them to the pinnacle as well. But what you're also saying is by having by far and away the best recruiting class, if you don't win the national championship in the next two years, it's the biggest disappointment of all time. Three years. But yeah, and I, 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 yeah I'm willing to look into the future like that with you. So what happens if they don't win within three years? What are, then, put some then, stakes then, on then, it. Then what do you want to put on it? Soul patch. You got to fire the entire so, staff. Nah, you got to rock a soul patch for a year. Yeah, I don't think patch. I can even make. I, I don't think you I can You look good one. in a soul patch. You look like uh, the guy from Smash Mouth. A no, bit. I I don't. I'm not a soul patch guy. Smash Mouth. I is think a good you could. Pull, I think you could be a, a great pull. I think you could be a soul patch guy. We're gonna get back to the boys in a second, but before we do, they're brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. It was created by fans for fans. Game Time is the ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute tickets on deals to sports concerts and shows and they guarantee the lowest price it's a must-see spring we've got concerts mlb games we've got baseball left and right you can go check out mets and yankees games up here in new york i'm sure that billy and jake are going to a bunch of games i'm sure that hank is going to want to go to a game in boston for the nba playoffs and it's all possible with the Game Time app. The biggest last minute price drops can be found on the seats that you thought that you could never buy. We saw Max representing 76ers when they took care of business against the Nets, all thanks to Game Time. You can skip the hassle, enjoy the moment. The process takes just two taps and 10 seconds. And once you buy your tickets, they're delivered directly to your phone. You don't need a printer. And the app lets you share tickets with friends so easily. You can do it via text so you can get into the game seamlessly. If you have somebody, if there's a parent in your life that doesn't necessarily know how to use the phone that well, if they don't know how to navigate the internet and emails and ticket transfers, all that stuff, it's perfect. You buy the tickets, you text it to them. It's that easy. Download the Game Time app, go to the website, enter your email and redeem code PMT for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Some terms apply. All you do is you just download that Game Time app or you can go to the website, enter that email address enter your email address, and then redeem code PMT for 20 bucks off your first purchase. And now, here's more boys. Yeah, don't don't discount yourself like nah, that. No, I'm not going to do that. I, let's do something else. Like you're big money. enough to be a soul patch guy. If you're if you're a large man and you no. have a soul patch, you're like, that guy plays bass I'm in like a new metal I'm it as if it's actually going to just grow <laughs> on me right now. <laughs> would you, you would, hey, Taylor, would it. you say that uh, Michigan should fire their entire staff if they went the No, I'm not going to say that either. Well, they've got the number one recruiting class in the country. Right but, now. But, but the, <laughs> the, the, right now they do. It's early in the, the recruiting The class. expectations have been raised. You beat you beat the shit out of Ohio State last twice, two years. Twice. The first year that you did it, that was kind of it. Like, you had to beat Ohio State. You yeah. did it. Uh, now well, you been, have to start going deeper. It's been progressive steps every single year. Beat well, Ohio, no, last beat Ohio year State, was, beat Ohio was State, lateral. The year be no, no, no. The next year, it's hey, can you beat Ohio State in Columbus the first time in twenty years? Did that? Okay. Won the Big Ten championship outright again. Now the next hurdle is just get to that final two. If they get to the final two next year, I'm happy. Okay. If they don't, I'm willing to put something on it. But a soul patch, listen, that's a, that's a life changing experience. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have improved. It's not necessarily lateral because you didn't lose by seventy this time. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's Ohio and State, they also kind of should have won. It should have been an all Big Ten. It should have been an all Big Ten national championship. Yeah, if that would have been so. That would have been so dope. Who that would you have gone for? I would have. I would have been happy. I would have been like, look, hang a banner. Big yeah. Ten won. Big Ten won. No matter what. So yeah, when we were talking, when was that? We're last year. All, it was right all before Black yeah. Friday. It was yeah, Black, yeah, it was Black yeah, Friday. Yeah, and we were talking yeah. about how we were talking to Big, Big Eddie, F. right? He's got yeah, a Big roof for. He's got a roof for Michigan. Yeah, he's got a. He just said he wouldn't. Yeah, it's like, bro, you gotta. It's like. Your Game of Thrones. Yeah, the Game you of gotta, Thrones. You got to come together to beat the White Walkers. Well, what he doesn't realize is that you, in a situation like that, if Michigan had gone to the national championship, it's a win-win as long as you just have your spin zone hat on. Because yeah. if Michigan wins, I would have been like Big Ten all the way. And if Michigan loses, I'd be like, Dave, you're a loser. Yeah. And if you, you can find your way out of one of those No matter what. Right. So you got to yeah. set yourself up with it, though, with the groundwork. Big Ed yeah, didn't you, realize you that. seem like a big insurance policy. Yeah, guy. right. Like you've exactly. always got something you just in your back pocket. Listen. When, you just always got to see a glass half full. Right. Like, I'm going to find my way out of this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Would you right. rather Would you rather lose in the 
in the semifinal game or get to the finals and lose and get blown out like TCU did? Uh, get to the finals. Because yeah, that, that, that one week of yeah. optimism yeah. is going to be so amazing. It's uh-huh. like getting – it's like the second weekend of, yeah. of uh, March Madness. But it's uh, – it is important to just always have yourself like every bowl season. I'll always tweet out the records like the first week in when like Illinois beats someone. Yeah, and SEC hasn't played yet, and I'm like SEC no wins. It's like <laughs> right. you just gotta get you gotta get it when the he going's does. good, and then when the going goes bad, you just disappear and say you I disappear. never said that. I never said any of that. Mm-hmm. That's a big thing about the internet, yeah. dude. It Big vanishes. Ten cat. I don't know who that guy is. Yeah, Big Ten's always <laughs> hot at the beginning of bowl <laughs> yeah. season, always. dude. Always I know playing. it. Believe me, I'm tweeting like, yeah. like mad. I'm yeah. changing my Twitter handle. I'm doing all the shit, and then when shit starts to go south, it's like. We're focused on the NFL playoffs. Yeah. What are we talking yeah, yeah, about here? Yeah. College football season's over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just but I think I think Michigan. I think Michigan wins it next year. Okay, they've done great with the transfer portal. They've had good players come in. Uh, our, our, our running back stayed. That JJ McCarthy, he's back. He's now got that experience. Want him back after. Oh yeah, you want him back? Absolutely. Kid's a stud. It's first time. First time. He's going to win the whole thing next year. Okay. So, um, football school officially. Oh, it's been a football school. Never it's the winningest program in college football history. Yeah. It was never once a basketball school. Uh, no, when I when I was there, it was definitely a basketball school. Yeah. Yeah. When I was there, it was everything but football school. And they are the our, winningest program. Our softball program. team ripped. Our basketball team ripped. Hockey team was in the Frozen Four like three out of the four years. And, mm-hmm. and Michigan was smarter than everyone else because like in the early 1900s, they just invited like the local YMCA to the Ann University Arbor, of Chicago. beat them, and then they're like, Look, another another win for the boys. Didn't they teach them how to play football? Yeah, there were a couple of teams the where Detroit they, they YMCA. They brought them like, in, come and, on over. and they taught you like, like, here's this sport that's taking over America. We're going to practice with you for two days, show you how to how to play the game, and then we're going to play you and beat you by two and call it a title, yeah. call it yeah. a national yeah. title. Yeah. yeah, they don't ask how; they ask how many boys. That's <laughs> I all. I actually want to look it up real quick. 1902 <laughs> Michigan. Let's yeah. just pick a random year. You you've already had this thing. No 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 no. I'm just picking a random. Michigan year. dominated in the 50s. That was like their last time that they like dominated it. 97. Day. We won a national championship. Uh, you shared a national in title. Week <laughs> week one, uh, 1902, they beat a school called Albion. Yeah. 88 to nothing. They were very. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I do. I want I want to ask a question. Throughout the record books, when Michigan and Albion <laughs> get together, these, yeah. no love lost. No Taylor rival. And Taylor, Albion <laughs> and Taylor don't say anything. Okay. And I oh wait, just, they beat Buffalo non-major, which I think was just dudes from Buffalo. 128 to nothing in 1901. <laughs> that's the kind of firepower we were doing. We got to get back to those good Dude, old that's days. That's a fucking juggernaut. Get back to that, Michigan. Let's do that again. Uh, Go ahead. All right, here's the question, and I would like everybody to answer too, so that way we get a, a majority vote. If you win a national title and you shared it, would you rather have the coach's national title or the AP national title? Oh, good Ooh. question. Good I, question. Go ahead, Billy. I respect the biz. Coaches? Coaches? No, Okay. Everybody can have their own vote. Yeah, yeah. AP. Coaches. I'd take AP. Mm. I'd go coaches. Three to three. Oh, yeah. shit. I'd take AP, and here's why. Because hey, it's split. when they talk <laughs> about split. you, who do you want writing the history of who won that national title? The journalists. They're going to they're gonna be like our team. They're going to go with the AP vote as opposed to the coaches. You really went 3-3? Three, three? You guys should just split it. This hypothetical. The hypothetical. because You should split it. You should split it because that never happened. Nebraska yeah. won the coaches poll. Or no, won the no I know. Won. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew what the question was. Okay. 1997. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the thing about Michigan, too, is Michigan has this. The AP's a wooden trophy. I know we got the saying. crystal. Yes. Yes. We got the nice. If, I know. It if, sucks. If, if you don't go to play. Michigan, usually people hate Michigan. Because the, they literally have it in their song, the leaders and best. I understand why they want the coaches Felt some type of way and let Nebraska have that that championship. Do you actually but think people hate Michigan? I I don't think about them at all. When they get good, yeah, you do. When they get good, I do that. You think about them every day. No, I don't. I don't feel strongly one way. Or the other. Like I, I would have been fine with Michigan winning the national championship this year, but I wouldn't have. You know what? I really I wanted them to win it last year when the big dogs showed up. What were they wearing? They're just the run the damn ball shirts. Yeah. And then they just couldn't run the ball at all. That was a tough look. Yeah. yeah. Well, they had a whole NFL came team in. on the, the Georgia. No, I think Wild. Mi- Michigan yeah. and Michigan when they're good is hateable because they're elitists. Ohio State when they're good, they're like scumbags and they just beat the fuck out of you. It's a very different hate for everyone else in the Big Ten. I would say. Wouldn't you agree, Will? Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. But how how is Michigan elitist? 
Well, I mean, you just said you, got, you like just literally the, said the leader. But if you're saying Michigan, I would say we, but we run it down people's throats, dude. We run the damn Michigan. Ball. No, winning. I understand. I love Jim Harbaugh. I'm a, I've been a Jim Harbaugh fan for a very long time. I love him. So it, it definitely dulls it for me, where I'm like, I want him to be successful. Right. But if but you're then a two-time Joe Moore you, award winner, first time ever in NCAA history, that's not elitist, dude. That's just grit and determination. But I, but I think what. PFT saying is like when you just think of the brand of Michigan overall, you feel like when they're winning, you're like, oh, all these preppy, yeah, the Harvard, all these Harvard, preppy Midwest, kids, mm-hmm. all yeah. these preppy kids are with yeah, all these witty toity boys. I know what he was saying, Will, and I, it's unfortunate, but it is kind of true. Will, would you have wanted Urban Meyer? Do what at, at Nebraska? Nebraska? Yeah, no, yeah, you would have wanted. You would have won guaranteed national won. title. A lot of blondes in, in Nebraska. That would have been yeah. a guaranteed he, 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 national title. Yeah, well, he wouldn't have made it a week there, dude. <laughs> yeah, Urban would, probably would have left. You know what I mean? There's yeah. not enough action going on out he, there. To, <laughs> all there is in Nebraska is denims, denim jeans, and blondes. Here, here's here's <laughs> one for you, uh, Taylor. October fifteenth, eighteen ninety six. Michigan won twenty eight nothing. Who did they play? Eighteen ninety six. Yeah, Yale. They played a school called. Physicians and surgeons. Yep. <laughs> so they're obviously it's a they bunch, of, bunch of Will Compton's. They got a bunch of Will lab Compton's coats in Ann Arbor. They're like, get on down here. Yeah, hell yeah. They, want to play. they just throw them the ball and light them up. That they're seems like, like a trap right. game, though. 28, you've got, you probably didn't cover the spread in that one. Yeah, no, no not. definitely not. Probably not at that time. That's a trap game. It, it trap is game. funny because obviously, like, they were playing football, so you can't really hate on them, but it's just funny to look at some of the names it's, of the dude, teams. It's so funny. It's just like, who the fuck? It's not even a school. What was the name of that school again? Physicians. And surgeons, physicians and surgeons. Yeah, I literally yeah, think they just wild. invited the medical school to for come real. down to get their ass kicked. <laughs> that's wild. <laughs> Good for them, dude, to see like they literally saw 200 years in the future. Yeah, that's what I'm focused. saying. Like you yeah. can't really hate it. It's just more funny to look back and be like, who the fuck did they play? Dude, that's why it's a top 15 <laughs> public school in the world. Like, like, they just week? think like that. They understand. So that means you're number 15 when you say top 15. Nope. I was top 15 pick. 1895 <laughs> against the Detroit Athletic Club. There it is. Yeah, yeah that's the YMCA. Yeah, that is the YMCA. <laughs> that is that is. Uh, imagine how sick that would have been yeah. to be on that t- Michigan team. Just be like, That'd who we awesome. got this week, boys? Yeah. We got it's the like, school, wow, we school just, teachers. Just, yeah, we just yeah. found these guys down the street. Yeah. They don't know how to play the game. Yeah. <laughs> like, Hell yeah, boys. Let's take care of them. So much fucking fun. Dude, that would be a hilarious movie. Like like a Will Ferrell doing that movie. Yeah. He, that's when they invent the forward pass. Or yes, whatever, like yes. something like that. Teddy Roosevelt has to step in. That's probably why he stepped in at that point to make football safer. Because you guys were just killing people on Had the football to, field. Yeah. We, we were just hey, players. Let's go back then, man. Uh, Will, you're 10.2. Loading. Correct. Loading. We're loading it, right? Always did, loading. Did you get any calls from XFL teams? No, man. You know, I tried, I tried pursuing the XFL. Hey, that's, not true. that's not true. You got a couple DMs, didn't you? I got DMs. No oh, phone okay. calls. Yeah, I did have That's a DM. That's brutal. They when can't I, call. When I showed the DM, uh, when I showed that public DM, the guy who was working that account was like, "Hey, do you mind asking Wolf if he can delete that? Like, I don't want that <laughs> to get back to me, and then I get fired." And I'm like, oh, hey, it's 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 free content right now, brother. Yeah, yeah. Um, Gotta live with that. And my my uh, my offer was, I'll, I'll play in the XFL if we can get the Rock on the podcast. If the Rock will come on the bus, uh huh. You know what I mean? Fair, don't you think? Yeah, he, that's reasonable. Yeah. Did he get back to you? No, we didn't hear anything. I would like to publicly sweeten that pot too. If if the Rock comes on our podcast, I will also play in the XFL. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. different team than Will though. Are you gonna play offensive line or, or tight? You don't want to play on the same team? No, I do, but I want to beat you again. <laughs> so that you're not mean. retired? That was really mean. I probably play tight end. You've beat yeah. me. I play tight end. You've beat me. Never. What do you? No, you once beat I beat never. you once when you, you were beat in the me Raiders. One time. You beat, you beat me, me twice. No, I, Michigan. Oh yeah, Michigan, Nebraska. I'm we're two and at two. Nebraska. We're two yeah, and two. Yeah, we're five hundred against each other. You should split a trophy. But then if you go yeah. into, <laughs> well, if you go to the Bussin Bowl, oh I'm, yeah, I'm three and two against you. That and that is sure if you go. Bussin that is bowl, very yeah. Michigan of you yeah. to invent a trophy to just win it every year against I, I, Nebraska. I, as they're in the worst. I was doing front a solid. <laughs> I, I was doing a solid for my friend, making sure his school made it to a bowl game that year. <laughs> Nebraska. That was me doing the best I could Nebraska to help his team out. In their worst stretch ever. It's like let's Yeah, you know what? Let's fucking yeah, make let's a trophy. Get this game. Yeah. 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 It's well, official. The uh, like I want to say Nebraska up in the press box called down like, hey, we don't want no ceremony going on here. So we, did, we didn't agree yeah. to this. We did not agree to this. Yeah. yeah. We created a bowl game and we, the the FAU actually put the trophy in their trophy case. Uh, uh, Western Kentucky. Where, oh, Western where, Kentucky. Yeah. yeah. They played F- – do they play FAU? They played down in Boca Raton. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Did you guys go the to it? And, no. uh, we sent Caleb on the field. He actually got an interview with the coach like right after the game. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's he so was right. like – he, he wasn't credentialed or anything. He just jumped on the field. 
and then he got kicked off the field. The Michigan, they're they're freaking supporting yeah. it. Yeah, they're, they're showing it off. Case. It's right next to the Paul Bunyan Trophy, the Brown Jug, all that. It's in that trophy case. Oh, little breaking news: Ravens uh, have agreed to uh, terms with Lamar Jackson. Good, I didn't want him anyways. Fuck him. What was the number? Uh, who cares? What too was much. The number? Do too we much. Over it. He's a running back. He's running back Don't that happens that. that happens to Don't play quarterback. Why would that. you ever want to agree to a long term deal with him as your quarterback? Overrated, fleeced. <laughs> Lamar Jackson fleeced the Ravens. Are you projecting? We're, right no, now we're in no, real time. No, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Just, Seriously, Lamar Jackson. He's coming off of like eight bout, eight bouts of IBS. His intestines are falling out of his butthole every week. He can't throw a forward pass. He's a running back. His PCL is made out of shredded cheese. This is coming from uh, a place imagine, of hate. This imagine from a place wanting, of hate. imagine wanting him as your quarterback. It's coming I, from a place. I of mean, hate. good for Lamar. I'm glad that he got paid. But if I was the Ravens, that's a lot of money to. Why don't to you get say what like you were telling me outside of here? I wasn't telling you anything. He's like, I would suck here. a dick for Lamar Jackson. Yeah, you're, you, there was another. I said your dick because it's so small. Mm-hmm. And it would be There's like another flossing. genetic thing he had going on that you didn't like about him. What do you mean? Uh oh. The truth. You were telling me the truth is about to come out. I'm just setting the stage. If you wanted to say it. You said all that I, other stuff about him. Say what you also I can't, said. In the I can't believe that you would go there, Will, because that's the fact that you're even thinking about it right now is very <laughs> racist on your part. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what he wasn't talking about. I, that. I, I truly, I love watching your guys' brains work. They operate different. Mm. You guys always do a really good job of finding the uh, the three moves ahead. Yeah, you guys do a good job of that. You Check. owe us money, right, Will? I don't think so. Yeah, you owe, did you pay? Did you pay PFT? What, what do I owe PFT for the mini golf? What 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 do we bet? We bet on the mini golf. It was like uh, five hundred each. It was busting against against PMT. Yeah, I think it Taylor was paid me. With you. No, Taylor paid me five hundred dollars. No, you owe him five hundred. We made a bet right before we, yeah. we have it on film. You yeah. have like you ten guys following you with iPhones you filming everything that you did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You got to show me the tape. You owe me five hundred bucks. Yeah, Taylor paid me five hundred bucks this morning because he's a gentleman. Yes, great guy. So do I owe you five hundred? No, you owe PFT five hundred, and also you robbed us at Arizona Bowl. But Taylor, I'll never say a bad thing about Taylor. You, Thank you're you you're a deadbeat. You do bring up PEDs a lot, but I do appreciate not saying Well, that it's, you know. <laughs> That's good of you to. What was it? What was it? That's good uh, of you. What was it? What was it? Smart of you to see the All right, bullshit, so Taylor. to all Tennessee fans, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to go <laughs> for my heart. I'm going to go for my heart. <laughs> One of the greatest speeches of all time. Oh, are you going to cover Will? Yeah, you're going to cover Will? Pass there pass we go. Pass oh, look at that. Look at that. What a guy. Thank, what a guy. Thank you, Taylor. Taylor's a stand-up well, guy. As soon as I saw you pull out that... Uh, yellow sheet of paper. I knew exactly what you're doing. I was like, let's get the fuck off this as quick as possible. You don't even have to pay right, me back. I, I, we're good. I, I, I do have a good, question for you guys because we haven't, we haven't, this is a serious <laughs> question. I'm not playing chess. I'm not moving. My, don't do this. I, I'm not doing anything. Yes, weird. In and Out is the best burger. No, 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 no. Not going to talk about that. I am curious to know how you guys decided that you were boys and you were going to work together. Was there a moment where you were like, I, I vibe with this dude? Was there anyone who approached the I other fuck person with him hard? and said, like, I fuck with this guy, hard body karate? Let's do a mm-hmm. podcast together. How did that go? I'll come in his hole. Um, Any of that? Whose hole got came into by the other guy? Because PFT and I come in each other's holes all the time. This is this is. I think it's another good question for the group. Like, who do you think would be the bottom? Who would be the top? I think this is a question for everybody. I think Will was like, I I want to do a podcast. Billy, who's the top? Well, well, how does it work with Jeffrey Star? I'll get to that a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Better hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead, Billy. You're all right. It's gonna be Will. Will's going to be okay. the top? No, no, the bottom. Okay. Oh, <laughs> power bottom. That's hey, all you got to say is power bottom. Will does have an ass on him, too. Yeah, he's got, he's got a great in ass. the trunk. Yeah. The wagon back he's got a little yeah. Buick back there. You fucking riding that. I love how Billy's the only one that answered. Let's just have it, like, keep it yeah, at that. Yeah, yeah. Keep so, it where Billy's the only one that answered. Yeah, yeah uh, Billy, uh, pretty sus of you to even think about that. People are saying that was sus of you. I'd never answer that question. Billy, don't, don't, I'd don't never dignify answer that, that with question. Response. <laughs> don't dignify that with I would, response. PFT, would you ever answer that question? I, I forgot the question already. Yeah, That's how straight I am. <laughs> what, were, what were you? How did you think it went? No, I, I, if I were to guess, I'd say that Will had the idea of like you wanted to get into the content game because you said that you were making you're fucking making vines on draft night. No wonder you didn't get drafted. People were like, this guy, yeah. he, cares, he doesn't care about football enough. Hang on, that's a what? Well, that's just some, my vine game's taking some ricochets. Right there. I don't even know why. <laughs> no, well, I'm, hey, the vines were probably great. That's my thing. Is like if the vines are too good, I'll be like that guy doesn't care about football. We should back up PFT. Well, that person would have been wrong. We yeah, would have made yeah, wrong judgment. You're right, call. that would have been I. I would have been a, dra- a bad GM. We had the idea to do a podcast in a van. Then Will saw it. <laughs> And yeah, it's like, oh, this is a good idea. So hang on, he, he said, "Hey, we're not. I'm not trying to play a chess." I'm not. I'm, I'm. I'm genuinely curious how you guys yes. got together 
and wanted to wanted to do a podcast. Yeah, I had the idea of doing a podcast. I want to say the very first time it might have been talked about between Taylor and myself, he was unsure of it. There was one time where I was driving to do some radio interview for Tennessee, and he's like, uh, "We the podcast came up again." He was like, "I'm down to do it." And then when the then when it finally happened, we were banged up at some Chinese restaurant. You can tell him the truth. We were banged. What? We were high. Yeah, banged up. The Chinese restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. banged yeah, up. Yeah. I thought you were drunk, but yeah. Yeah. I thought okay, yeah, I we, thought he was high on HGH. There he goes again. <laughs> so we were give me five hundred dollars back. <laughs> we had, we had that. I'll give you every time every time we make a reference to your PDL, yeah, yeah, I'll give you yeah, hundred dollars. Yeah, go ahead, pass that back. back. Pass that through. There you go. There you go. One, and then we one. uh yeah we were high at a Chinese That's restaurant real. and uh, shook hands. No no no, there's only one. There's only one. We're good. And shook hands. Now. So yeah. That's, yeah, that is how it started. Yeah. You were high at a Chinese restaurant and you shook hands. That's when it. That's when it got. Consolidated. So Will wanted to do it, and I was like, I'm 100%. And two days later, I left to go to California to train for three months. Yeah. And then I came, I like, Will called me like halfway through training. He's like, Do you really still want to do this? Because I'll wait for you. Because he was like, I want to. He yeah, thought, I was like, If not, I got, I want to get this going because, you yeah. know, who knows if fucking I'll get the opportunities to play. Right. And yeah. so I was like, Yeah, I'm for sure down to do it. And then we found the bus quickly after I got back to Nashville. What year yeah. was that? 2018? 2019. Okay, what, year, 2019? 2019. what year was Barcel Van Talk? Uh, 2017. 2017. Okay. You know what's crazy is if you look at when the uh, our podcast started and my NFL career, how fast my NFL career went down. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> like in 2019, we started the podcast. Like two months later, I failed for a PED. The next year, I tear my ACL. Wait, the next year, I get I get Chandler Jones. And the year after that, I get my ACL again. It's like, <laughs> yo. You might owe me some money, boss. Yeah, and it also is like when you when you when you like list all that out, it it sucks. It's that tough. You to, were it's like, tough to look. It's tough well, to find this out now on this podcast. No, but like more than, more than anything, you also then had a podcast. You had to answer to all of those. Yeah, things and just and that's like, good to have your own narrative. Taylor, no, narrative yeah, that's possible. huge. Taylor, the podcast is the best thing to happen for you. Yeah, yes, it really is. I think it, it is, is. It is the so it's so your wife not the best thing. No, as far as oh. for, for you know. Okay. Yeah, my wife. You talking about my wife? And, <laughs> my wife and my wife and two kids over the podcast. Second best no thing. No okay, chance. Right, cool, cool, my kids cool, have only spent money, dude. Cool, I'm cool. making a whole bunch of money doing this. It this does make awesome. sense though that, like, if you think back to when we started part of my take, big guy, big guy got bit by a dog. Yeah, like, right after. Right through I, my pinky. I broke yeah. my foot walking, yep. and ever since then, or we've had kidney stones. Yeah, P BVT got canceled. BVT got canceled. I've had yeah, I I broke a rib. It's been bad. It's, it's been, been tough. Podcasting really is tough, tough on my the back. Body. Blew the, out my back. The only person I've seen not affect is Will Compton. Yeah. The only positives have happened to him. Yeah. He, he just kept, he just dragged you into his no. devil's yeah. lair. Yeah. He's he's like, his convoluted awesome. web of I lies. I just keep yeah. it. I just keep it moving, dude. Bro, you yeah, you keep it a band with the kids, huh? <laughs> keep it going, man. You keep, you keep going. Are you really upset about that? About the, what? Lamar Jackson? No, I don't care no, about Lamar. Right. Again, yeah, that's yeah, another guy that I don't think of at all. Like, who, yeah. who cares? Hey, why did you guys stop uh, doing Lamar Jackson? Not, not the, Lamar not Jackson, the, at least 180 guaranteed. Oof. Nice. Why didn't you guys continue doing just and at least 52 a year? Pods? Well, we still do. We we did do it like the Super Bowl that year. We I remember Bo came on that. Yeah. Yeah. Every every yeah. time we go on Grit Week, we'll interview people out of the RV or a van. So we we do it whenever we're mobile. Now it's like a nice van, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, no, we have to just the RV. I mean, we've changed. Barstool's had different RVs. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I guess it is a nicer RV. So um, the van was only for like a certain like a, like we bought week. a van for Grit Week called Vanny Woodhead. That's for right. Six hundred dollars in Queens. Uh, yep, that's the hubcap right there. Very cool. Um, thing was a piece of shit, but we loved it. And then that started van talk, and yeah, we did a, a bunch of interviews out of there, which was sick. Yeah, I yeah. do. I do remember a couple of those because I, I, that's when I came across it. Of course Bo, you do, because Bo went on. You had it on your like uh, little inspo board. No, <laughs> like your, your little Etsy, like you know. I will. I'll, these I'll, guys, the, the, you the know what you got the bus thing do? was one hundred percent me. It you, wasn't. Uh -huh. Buzz, will was against, like not against the bus. Oh, thing. You were, you whoa, were, whoa, will, will, whoa, will seems to disagree. Whoa. No, I'm saying. I always, I always thought that the, the bus the, part was the, the best part of the, the show. The production team we were working with at the time. When we curated the whole thing, he's like, "Hey, what do you think about this? Uh, there's this broken down bus out back in this gravel parking lot." I was like. I don't fuck with it, but I feel like when Taylor gets here, he's gonna fucking love it. Yeah. So I was like, let's wait till he gets here. Taylor's like, he's like, oh, this is fucking awesome. Yeah. I we love go it. out back, and then Taylor's like, yeah, let's get it. It was like two thousand dollars, and he's like, I put ten grand into it. If it works, awesome. If it doesn't, I'll just keep it in my backyard. Yeah. You know what you guys should do is you should end every show. You should get like a slot machine on the bus. Yeah. And then take turns trying to get the slot machine right. We, and then I'll, the winner gets a jackpot from it. Yeah, that's a great we, idea. Is that an original thought? Yeah, yeah, but it's really good if one of your producers doing, never gets it. We're gonna start doing uh, 
like fans asking questions like FAQs. Yeah. Oh, nice, uh-huh. nice, yeah. nice. Not Busmore, yeah. 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 Not Busmore. Not Busmore's yeah. known. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah, like that one of our. Known. That was one of our brainchilds that really yeah. came to fruition. Yeah. Yeah. Not Busmore. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I gotta admit, like credit where it's due. That's a funny name. Yeah, that's Thank a good you. name. That's a good name. <laughs> um, all right, last question for you guys. Oh, it's over soon. We can go forever. You guys we not can, like we can go out? longer. I'm extremely uncomfortable sitting like in this two chair. Hours uh, until the fucking draft. Ro- <laughs> Fuck, I have been so <laughs> uncomfortable this entire yeah, podcast. Yeah, that that, that uh, this couch seat sucks is not dick. Great. I look at Will. I, Will I look gave at Will you casually, the bad seat. and I'm like, man, he looks so comfortable. I'm like pitting out. Like, a, I keep looking at my shirts like wrinkled from the sweat. No, like, it's a bad seat. It's a bad. It's a bad seat. Thank you, thank you for seeing my truth. And the couch is held up by paint cans. Yeah, and this mic. You guys have been in the business for too long to have a mic like this. Let's get some more sandbags. Part of the allure. All right. So last question. So the last. Last question, we're going to keep going. Yeah, yeah the last I want to keep going. Roback.com, R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. Use code TAKE for 20% off your first purchase. Q-zips, polos, joggers, and shorts. Shorts coming. Go get your shorts right now for summer. Roback.com. Use promo code TAKE for 20% off. Uh, do you guys want to guess the lottery ball? That's the last question. Yes. Also, other last try. question. I saw you hit the other day. It made me excited. It was so fun. It's so fun. Uh, how just... We can cut this. We'll just turn off the mics. But how sick was it to do PEDs? <laughs> Give me. Yeah, here you go. I'll pay. I'll pay a hundred bucks for that. For sure. I, that I, honest that answer. I'll pay. I'll pay for. I'll pay hundred Two hundred right there. Right? It felt good, right? When you got pop. I'm show you guys run it. <laughs> go ahead, Billy. <laughs> Billy just took Billy. Billy uh, you know, hey, no, that's weird. That's that's <laughs> Williams. Bro, you Mike. would fucking you would crush a styrofoam cup right now, dude. I guarantee you're on something, aren't you? What? You're on well, the gear. You have something. No, no, but I'm you're just saying, on gear, but don't work out. You, know you just do many, it because it's <laughs> cool to you. Isn't that you know, right? You know you're on like a whole dudes, shitload of trend. You know how many dudes like started doing Asta after you got popped? Oh, your role like, model. My buddies. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> <a trendsetter. laughs> They're like, yo, that's what Bro, you got popped for. Let's you know do what's it. crazy is there was a whole bunch of dudes in the Did UFC that got popped for that too. You really? Know, you know Austrian's four? Yeah. Did it work for your boys? Exactly. It doesn't do anything. It's for osteoporosis. So yeah. it's not nothing bene- beneficial towards football at all for yeah, me. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah. And I, w- I really, I really oh, wish. Oh man, I'm sure you can you find some. You, you just you keep, keep fucking that. rolling through that one. <laughs> when you fucking, if you're gonna, Will, if you, yeah, can Will, 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 that one is still not computed with yeah. Will. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I'm just waiting for it. If you're gonna do something, like do it, do it, and then you get like like Brian Cushing, like what a win for him. Yeah, he's fucking, you know, twice. You know, if you're gonna do it, you might as well get something out of it. I just. Wish, if I was no matter what going to get popped up, like I might as well do something. Right, yeah. right. You didn't get yeah. your money's worth. Well, yeah. how, how well, you are now. Every time we bring it up, yeah, you guys. Actually, <laughs> I've been enjoying this more than ever. Made three hundred dollars this podcast. Well, how how did you get away with using steroids for so long? You know, I will tell you a story. So I tore my PCL Pickle. in two thousand sixteen, and uh, I was back on the field playing in nine days. Damn. I remember the doc I was working with. I was like, "There's a notable player that everybody has that's rumored out there to be on the stuff." And I was like, "Give me what's in his bag," and put it in my knee. And I injected myself like three days in a row, and I was back on the field. Oh shit! That's that's how Billy, I did not know that story. That's how Billy knew. I think Billy used you as a consultant when he was shooting me up with something. Yeah, BPC-157. Yeah. That's a peptide that is now illegal in the NFL, but, dude, I mean. We all use it I get, so I much. got fired up. When I saw it was illegal, I was fired up. I was like, oh, hell yeah. Like, we I've been really on this train something. since 2016. Yeah. Yeah. You knew that you were doing yeah. something right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. BPC is a wonder drug. Like, every, everybody was using BPC back then. Yeah. Before, and then, like, was it last year? Last year, January, like, it went illegal? Yeah. I wouldn't say everybody was using Not it. Not everybody, like, but there was you, there was couple hundred guys i found it probably. because ben greenfield was on rogan's pod talking about it. that's when he's talking about doing red light for his balls to raise t levels and uh he talked about he talked about bpc 157 <laughs> what he talked about you ever heard of that the red light for his ball yeah so ben greenfield he was on rogan's podcast and they're talking about ways to uh raise your t levels one of them was red light therapy on your balls okay for 15 minutes every day it is a go- he also work? yeah he also injected his dick with stem cell Okay. Turn black and blue. He would do shockwave therapy. To Why break didn't he just do vessels. HGH? So he was. Why do- didn't he just go to therapy? It sounds yeah. like he just hated his dick. He's he was a doing a men's like men's health. Uh, wanted him to do an article, and he was basically biohacking. Got yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Big biohacker. But yeah. he also was talking about BPC one fifty seven. That's how I learned about it that day. I was like, "Fuck! I need to get my hands on some of this." It's not. Is it helps like recover injuries? Helps with leaky gut? Like a Ooh. lot of good stuff. Mm-hmm. When I would tear. Uh, when I get like a. I had a 
fucking grade one hammy. I would inject it right into the fucking tissue like twice a day. And I'd be able to do that on the field sprinting in Damn. like five days. Yeah, Damn. I avoided surgery on my arm because Billy shot me up with that. But yeah. there, tennis elbow is a big one. Yeah. You'll, go, yeah, you'll go right into it. I got a, I had an ankle sprint. I would literally put it right in my ankle, and like three days later, it was fine. See, yeah, I I respect when you guys do it, but there was a moment when Billy actually stuck a hypodermic needle into my arm and then injected some mystery chemical into it. Where I that was my point where I was like, the content game has gone too far for me. The content yeah. game yeah. has gone. Th- yeah, that you were n- weirdly nervous about that. Well, I I don't think it's weird to be nervous about Billy injecting medicine. Yeah, I into get your that body. part, but I figured like I would have like you would have told me if it was if it yeah, was yeah, 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 because it's really not like you know I think it should be something that's allowed. Yeah, yeah. it's like that was the equivalent. Like Ben was talking about TB five hundred cocktailed with something else. Like that's something that fixes injuries right away, but that's illegal on the banned substance list because that's like you put it in race horses. Right. So, yeah. But he had found BPC one fifty seven. He's like, this is a good. Uh, substitute where it's not on any banned substance list. Yeah. Your PCL bounced back. You're ready to play. BPC wasn't in my PCL. I don't know what was in my PCL. I was just like, hey, I'm willing to, like, I'll do whatever it fucking takes. Take some, yeah, some science. Yeah, some yeah. Blue- yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll actually, I'll find this video too, and it's. Varsity you guys keep talking. I'm trying stuff, to find dude. this video. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, BPC, like, is literally stands for body protection compound. And okay. it, it helps so much yeah. with just like recovery, sleep. It's amazing, dude. It really is one it. of the best things you can do. Really wants to talk it. again. Billy. Oh, Billy's, Billy's just heard all this. Billy. Are you concerned so. about a negative feedback loop with that though? Uh, that people, if you, if people, you, no, no. If you stop taking it, your body's gonna stop producing it. No, because once once I found out it was gonna be on the banned substance, because the, the NFL were releasing is like BPC, a, a starting January whatever year is gonna be illegal. Then you just stop taking it. <laughs> what is this video? <laughs> What's going on? Just playing a video. <laughs> so this is a podcast. So yeah. there's a strong audio. Oh, component some too. random. It's the video of Will getting shot in his knee. Oh. <laughs> and wait, no, no, you no, put no. like DMX in the back? Sure the listeners will BPC love that. BPC isn't like that. You people rocks. watching YouTube don't get to see that. Billy, Billy, BPC is not a compound that's going to like, it doesn't raise testosterone levels. It doesn't, does, it's not one of those things you get off it and you feel like shit. Like you literally just take it and you just, it just feel, you feel better. You just feel fucking better. That's all it is. That's, I, I want to feel better. In, yeah. infl- inflammation, yeah, just, yeah. like look, yeah, pain relief. You've looked it up. Yeah. It's incredible. It um, is truly, it's one of the best. No downside. Ever. Yeah. yeah. No, none, no downside. None. <laughs> Nothing. We'll Only find out a long time. Boys. Yeah. That's how I like all my drugs. Uh, all right. You guys want to guess a number? So this will count officially. God. Hank's not here. I really so are we going to double this, up man. for today's show? Is there, or is this yeah, going to be, be on Monday's show. We'll right. double up. It's a Monday show. Yeah. We'll do a regular this one. This will count official. I'll guess numbers. I'll guess 17. Okay, I'll 18. guess um I'll guess seventy seven. God damn it. Fifty one. Um ninety nine. Oh mm. okay. Uh go ahead. I think there's Billy. no chance of ninety nine. Billy's gonna Billy's say it hit the other day. It hit the other day. Yeah, it's hit hit it on few, it's 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 at his moment. It's, it's at his hit. moment. Not only has Hank not gotten it, but JJ Watt when he came on over the Super Bowl. He was like, just guess ninety nine. It's hit twice since Which then. by the way, uh and not too much context. Do you wanna talk about when we came into your guys's podcast yeah that was awkward JJ? do you want yeah. to talk about that or yeah, no? no that was fine yeah it was it was definitely a, a was life awkward. experience it was a so, good life experience for me it, so yeah. it was it, i'll set the stage real quick it was at the super bowl we just interviewed Arizona, jj yeah. watt it was i think his first interview mm-hmm. since he retired and uh we had a great chat with him it was it was wonderful and uh taylor you asked big cat to bring up like why don't, won't you go on the bus yeah, yeah. and yes, so, okay, so big cat brought it up and then jj's like well because he spit on my brother. Yeah. And instantly we're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Definitely okay. Yeah. 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 I agree yeah, with yeah, you yeah. that you yeah. Yeah, we're like, probably we take your side here. We love on, these on guys. But yeah. But then as we're wrapping up, Will and Taylor with like five camera guys come through the door and confront JJ. And it felt like we were JJ in. thought he was getting like trapped. And yeah. we're like, dude, yeah. we didn't set this up. Yeah. Well, that's Our not bad. true because you did say you should come in. I said you meet him after. Like you came in right as we were finishing. He, was he not texting us when we were? But at, I also didn't think show? you were gonna come in with said, five cameras. He said you can come back, and the people were like, "I think they're about to be done. You guys can go in there." Obviously, coming in the doors, we weren't coming in to ambush. But right, I, yeah. you can see how it looks yeah, yeah. that way. But it yeah. was it cool. It was for the better. Like you guys for, talked. A it little. wasn't for the better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and bringing the five cameras in, it's kind of like we're we're at Barstool's Vacation HQ. Like yeah, you yeah. know, like that's a game of content. So we wanted to. Yeah. That's just kind of like how I, you just feel like that's the norm. So you just kind of bring the bring the cameras. But in. it was one of those moments where I think every person to a man in that room was like, 
this is awkward. Yes. Like but, everyone. But everyone, sometimes, sometimes, every side of it was like, whoops. Yep. Sometimes there's got to be some conflict <laughs> before like, cooperation. Yeah, awesome. because, yeah. <laughs> and it was so tough. Will, too. Will was Dude, just like, what's going on now? I felt, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, you did what? <laughs> During your guys' conversation, like he came in, obviously he says something under his breath, like, is this an ambush or something? Yeah. And you guys had to like reassure him. And then at one point, you and JJ were talking, and then you and Will were talking, and I was like the fifth man out, kind of just waiting for the like to get into <laughs> yeah. a conversation, and it was so uncomfortable. But I was like, I gotta get fucking through this, yes. Because at the end of the day, I do feel really bad about uh, spitting on TJ's face. I know I said it as a joke and stuff like that before. It did actually happen. No, and I could tell too because we talked about it there, after. There's, offline, there was genuine remorse. Everything, yeah. yeah. There was genuine remorse, and hopefully, we're gonna build to maybe someday having the Watt brothers on the bus. It's almost like I don't maybe. want. I, I, maybe. I'll, no, listen. And, I'm no, not instead of them, for it. I'm instead of maybe. them coming on the podcast, just them to know that I'm actually sorry. Yeah. I don't even care if I they come they on. I, I don't even care. Do. But I, just, I care. Yeah. And have we yeah, yeah. have we officially agreed that you're no longer spitting on anybody's face? Because I, I asked you about that. I right. did take a lot of L's for that during that week. It was definitely a Barstool turn on Taylor vibe. It was well, like no, Will's, no. Will's uh, dinner and then the spitting thing. I'll, I'll tell you two what, things yeah. that really a lot of good. What drama. happened was like I, I was I was helping coach you through how to apologize for this at the time, and I was like, "Well, you said that you're sorry. Are you are you no longer going to spit on anybody's face? Is that is that shot out of your bag right now?" And you're like. I don't know if I can promise that. And so, yeah. so I think that would maybe go a long Dude, way to be so, like, I've learned a lesson. I've evolved as a human yeah. being in my, in my pre woke phase, I was spitting on people's faces. Now this is a new, this is a new tailor. We're done spitting. There's yeah. so many other individuals that that's happened to that you've spit on. Yeah. Playing football. I, that's happened yeah. more than once. But and you can I, turn a new leaf. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I probably won't spit on. Anybody Are you retired? Probably. <laughs> let's, <laughs> yeah, no, you know what? I let's retire. Let's retire from spitting on people probably. today. Probably. Nah, probably. Let's retire. Nah, from, you don't, don't I, want to retire from, I, don't I, retire from spitting on people. That's tough to let yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll retire from spitting on people. Okay, that's huge. I don't, I don't know, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I believe that though. Fear monger you in the. Nah, bro. It's all good. Sometimes you got to grow, dude. Yeah. All right. What were your numbers again? You're ninety nine. 99, 51, Se- hey, that was a fuck move. 77? That was a fuck move. All right. Hey, uh, should we talk 17? about the, should we talk about uh, the dinner? I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> just yeah. K, just We didn't do enough content up. about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Num- all right, here we go. Come this on. would be awesome if you guys got it. Hey, we should do Taylor's something Taylor's like got this. 99. If you Meme get on 99, one. that's a good one. what do you have? 51, 51. Meme says one. I've Oh, I just saw 51 pop through. 75. Oh, close. Man, it's such a letdown when nothing happens. Dude. Imagine never getting it. <laughs> a tank. tank? Yeah, never. We've had. You I've guys had all mach- hit it. I bought this machine from China three years ago. Never gotten it. You've never gotten it. He's never gotten it. That's tough. Yeah. Hey, we should do something like this. Yeah, we really should. Yeah, we should yeah, do no, this. Yep. All right. Thank you, boys. Appreciate it. We're gonna be in Nashville in a, a month and a half. We'll come on the bus. Tied yeah. in. You were gonna make some fun yes. content. Yes. Yeah. It's gonna be great. You guys do need to come. And on it's the kind bus. of crazy. You guys kind of put yourself. That was kind of our thing. If we're talking about taking ideas, we did. We did uh, tell him, actually, tell him, yeah. I mean, George did ask us to come to the initial. He one. did say that on our yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. So, George uh, is such a fun-loving dude. Like, he really yeah, is. and he's really good friends with us specifically. He called. He called us, and he's like, "Hey, I, I know you guys didn't want <laughs> you guys to come, but we, I invited him anyway." You know, how George is. He's always going to be nice. Yeah. Has Has George ever said that he would take over for one of you guys if one of you guys were to die or get kidnapped in a foreign country? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, yes. He, he takes you. over okay. when oh, when Taylor's not. Has, yeah, George, not has George ever done a dab for you after scoring a touchdown in the NFC Championship game because it was your birthday? No, I but I've okay. never asked right, him. So my no, birthday's yeah, my birthday's yeah, birthday's yeah, my birthday's yeah, in September. Well, it sounds like he can never do it. Do you think he uh, did it for me? Do you think uh, George is an AWL? He's originally yes over a boy. Yeah, I think if you if you hit him with truth serum, should we should we call him? No, no, we don't have to put him on the spot. Let's call, call, call him. Fine, call him. Call him. I, I'll call him. I, I'll, call I'll call him. Oh, no, oh, I'll call him. I'll call him. You know what? He's uh, He might still be pissed off at Hank for betting on the Cowboys. Oh, yeah. That was bad. So that's on Hank. So if he's if he says you guys, it's because of Hank. Yeah, it's not us. Who's not gotten a lot do of fa- ball, by the way. Do you FaceTime or call? I just called. What'd you call? George. That is my name. Hey, we need you, brother. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> no, no, don't no, no, want to no, 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 okay, no, okay, no, let him George. get the context. No, all I meant was we need an answer out of you. Um, no, no. Hang on. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, easy, no, easy. No, whoa. Why are you standing? George, George it's uh, Big Cat. He, he, the, the boys are with us in the PMT studio. We were saying, huh, remember the time? No, when hang on. No, 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 no. All right, so the question is, we're going back and forth because we're talking about how much of a boy you are. Like, as far as, like, just a good dude. Just a dude. Yeah, just a dude. But we were like, what do you think George is more of, an AWL or a boy? 
Oh, wow. Are you, are you asking me which one I prefer? Yes. Yeah, George. Yeah, like if, if we were. Big PFT here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if we were standing facing each other about to. If fight, we were on fire yeah, who, yeah. and you had one bucket of water. Hey, there George, you go. George, Both. you remember when you were a rookie and we met you downstairs hey, uh, at that hotel? Hey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. George remembers all of it. Like he, like if he picks you guys, it's That was the best good. night of my life. Both of us were all on fire. You could, you got two buckets of water. Who are you dumping them on? But you Which can side? You can only pick a yeah, side. You can you only pick a side. Pick one of each. No, actually, you could just, you do whatever you want. I pick, I pick Will and Big Cat. Oh, oh. all right. <laughs> Will, we're good. <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> That's a win. <laughs> That's fucked up, Will. No, that was smart oh. of him. because All right, all right, all right. All, right. All, water. The, all the shit with Theo Vaughn. You know he's more on Theo Vaughn's side than us. After saying that answer? He said me, so I'm alive. This I can't. Is, hey, guys, I'm dead. Guys, just a heads up. This is getting desperate out of you. AWL, AWL or boy, George? Oh, he just picked it. He it's picked strictly just because I have hosted both of the podcasts with Big. I did an episode where I host with Big Cat, and then I did episode, I've done episodes where I've hosted with Will. And Taylor also went to Michigan. This so is like, a diplomatic died. answer. Also, he's if a, I die, then he would just in. take my spot. Yeah, right. right. But George, so AWL or boy? Lawan would take two bucks of water. So just because of how big of a person he is, so like that. I can't. I can't only save one. Guy. That that weirdly made me feel well, better. Ta- Taylor feel better. would probably be like, "Oh, all you got is water." I was, hope- I was hoping you had HGH. There it is. All right, there you go. Right. So, George, <laughs> AWL or boy? Hold on. Be- what? <laughs> hey. There it is. Hey, George. All right, love you, George. You know what? Hold on. Hold on. This is like, uh, what is it? Might last touch? question. Last no, question. Uh, last question. King Solomon. Since yeah, he yeah. saved yeah, both you and Big Cat, who would he host for? Since you saved both me and Big Cat, who would you co-host next to? Ooh. I will say my chemistry with Compton's one of a kind. Oh, oh that's so it. Will did, but this is all right. This has been a great show. Thank you guys. A piece of Thanks shit. for guys Taylor, coming a part of my Taylor, take. I'm Taylor Lewand. This is Will Compton. Taylor, if you Please ever subscribe Taylor, and rate five stars Taylor, and bless him with the boys. Taylor, like look at me dead in the eye. If you ever want to fucking leave this piece of shit and join with us, we'll do a three man podcast. Yeah. We're good. Three of us. All right. I'll me, make you sure and PFT. I remember that. We'll fucking ride together. I got you forever. All right. That's cool. Okay. Wrapping up. Good show, boys. Uh, by the way, Jake, any comment about the fact that I met the second best tennis player of all time awesome. this weekend? That was awesome. You ran into Roger Federer for I did. people who didn't see. Yeah, second just best. in the streets of Brooklyn. Yeah. Well, he was at the same place I was eating lunch. Right. But just minding it, he's very unassuming. Yeah, he seems like a really nice guy, yeah. was he? very nice guy. Held the umbrella for me. Yeah, it's all, well. Biggest umbrella of all time. Yeah, I mean, kind of a beta That's what happens in tennis. The ball boys, when they're sitting, they hold it under the players. So he was my ball boy. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. No, he's a very nice guy. Yeah. Very good looking, too. Very good looking. (laughs) Not as good as Djokovic, but not everyone can be perfect, right? Yeah. Uh. Uh. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay. Wednesday, who do we... Oh, we have uh, a big hockey guest on Wednesday, so get excited for that. And we're also going to F1 in Miami. Yeah, we'll be down there uh, starting Wednesday. So, F1. Vroom, vroom. Push, push. Title Town. Title Town. Miami is Title Town as of right now. Uh, okay. Let's wrap up the show. Hank, I just want to remind you, if you have a question, this will be the time. Have you ever gotten this? I have not. Mm. I'm going to take seven. Oh, oh, wait, oh, no, oh, oh. I didn't say it. I didn't oh, say it. Said, I didn't no, say that's it. a false start. That's, that's a yeah. false start. You know that's a false You didn't start. jump all the way across the line. Yeah. Neutral zone and I got back. Nah. No, no, we snapped it. I got back before the snap. Uh, you know, you know, you know, you know. Uh, numbers. 69. 76. 18. I'll take 17 if you're not going to take it. You got to pick last PFT. Yeah, you I'll have take, to pick last. You, so you 76 last. is still up for grabs. Yes. I'll take 53. Okay. I'll take 17. Keep in mind the number earlier this episode with the boys, 75. Oh, yeah. We did an extra one with the boys. Don't care. You wouldn't have gotten it. <laughs> I'll take 20. PFT? 76. Okay. Uh, Hank, you have 18. the better seat. You have unquote. you have the best seat. but When I've gotten it twice in three years. That's just a skill problem. But. Okay. What was your number, Hank? 53. I'm going to take two. I'm going to take two. Oh, my God. 14. <sighs> I thought it was 17 for Sean a second. Stafford. What would you do if I got 17 and one? What's the puku? That is now <laughs> twice 
Two out of the last three Sundays, the 14th is hit. Hey, April 16th. Oh, my God. This thing is easy, Hank. Eels made it some of the deepest parts of the ocean, and no one's really sure how they do it. Eagles? Love you guys. Eels. Oh. <laughs> Eagles. That was about to be a crazy fucking stat. <laughs> that bad, like... <laughs> Go birds. No, but like literally, they New might Wednesday. like go into the center of the earth, <laughs> like hollow earth theory. 